Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to enjoy the following live streaming event of Brawl Masters. Tonight we will bring into conclusion a championship race that has started that was started back in October with a total of 57 episodes, more than 100 hours of wrestling action. Tonight we will know once and for all for certain who is deserving to be called the season 3 champion. Coming to you live from Helsinki, Finland. I'm your host Kubari Parta and this is Brawl Mania. Yes, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's good to be back in the live streaming setup here for the Pro Masters, and I honestly couldn't think of a better way to finish up the series, the season 3 series of the Pro Masters. It's been one hell of a ride so far, and tonight it's uh, noted about it gonna be absolutely wild, as we will finally know for 100% certainty which one of the brawlers will be claiming the top title in the series for the se for the cells for this season at the very least Magic Maggie season 1 and 2 champion tonight the legacy will continue tonight the race between six brawlers will conclude just uh, just to give up a quick recap of the situation that's going on right now on the first place right now we have Thunderstorm Andre with a total score of 132 points and uh, as well he is the current men's professional martial arts division champion I will give in, uh, get into the championship benefits later on tonight as we get into the is uh, get into the specific championship fights the second place currently goes to the women's professional martial arts champion Selena Bochamp 112 and right behind her the Grand Prix Champion, the Women's Grand Prix Champion, Kathy Gardner, 111 points. So you can see it's very close, very neck to neck. On the fourth place, tonight we have Mark Hunter, 104. Not a champion, but an all-star brawler. And uh, later on tonight, gonna be taking part in a huge event that just might give him the edge to ga gap in and try, try to increase the ranking here just before the final. Fifth place goes to Amaya Grace, currently with 102 points. Unfortunately for her, she's not going to be taking part in the show tonight. We could not get a hold of her. N neither member of the new foundation were available. So we will just have to... Pretty sure that we will have to uh, set her goal and uh, drop her down. Which brings us to the final, the sixth currently ranking brawler, Dr. Edwards with 98 points and we, being the Royal Rumble winner Dr. Edwards is set to go against the men's Grand Prix champion later on tonight Cutie Pie Cook himself having to defend his title but yes that's just a little preview of what's gonna be happening I will be updating the scoreboard here for your live as any of these six brawlers or someone from below them happens to make a move that would allow them to get to the top six but without further ado let's get on with the show let's get on with the fir first match of the night we have a full 14 card match tonight six championship fights and by the end of the night at the 14th the ma main event of tonight is gonna be the season champion and a partner of their choice going up against the elimination chamber winners Marfa Baker and the Blue Fruit but yeah, enough about introductory speeds, let's get on with the show. Starting us here off, we have Carl the Jarl and the Cybernetic Nike Chrome. Very excited, very excited. And once again, this will be a live streaming event. This will, uh, this is not going to be cut down, this will not be put up in parts on YouTube. This is uh, going to be exactly like that. So if there's ever a situation you wanted to uh, interact here with the like commentation now is your time once again hello and welcome we're about to kick off 
the final the final matches of the season three of Brawl Masters. Fourteen matches coming your way. With thirteen of them still counting by the fourteenth match we will we will have our season champion made fully fully aware. And of course, as the Elimination Chamber winner, Martha Baker is the greatest host, the, or the hostess rather, of the show tonight. So you can understand the bit of, bit of a retro style of the arena. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Copenhagen, Denmark. Weighing in at 271 pounds, Carl the King! Yes, Carl the King, Carl the Jarl here. Definitely one of the greatest season 2 brawlers here to give us a excellent, well, what I hope to be an excellent junior fighting exhibition match. I, I did sense mention that we have six championship fights, but in between those we will have plenty of exhibition fights as well. And starting us off, I couldn't honestly think of a better man than Carl Jarl. You can check the show program in the description of this stream. Uh, by the time the stream has come to a conclusion, I will uh, I'll do my best to update the timestamps as soon as possible so you do not miss out on anything you want to see. But honestly, you, you should just watch the entire show if you're just a, a fan of wrestling. Weighing in at 245 pounds, Krom, the Cyborg Knight. It's definitely going to be one one excellent a show here with Krom, the Cybernetic Knight, making his way down the ramp and about to enter the ring. Red carpet too, so we, we, we went full on for this night. Absolutely. Absolutely a fantastic show gonna be. Chrome and Carl Jarl. Very decent, very respectable competitors. Having having come through multiple times. And let's actually take a take a look at the situation here. Carl Jarl with 68 points and Chrome. 50 points throughout season 3 So very very prolific not quite to reaching to the top t top tiers But both of them definitely proving themselves to be stable names here Chrome starting out dropping the leg drop from the top rope Going for kicks, but looks like that only has awakened the beast inside the Jarl hooks up the cybernetic knight and with a powerful suplex toss just tossing around the ring. Yeah, it's gonna be definitely gonna be fantastic. Remember in the Pro Masters we have championship advantages. The defending champion in most cases will have the stipulation of their choice when going into the fight, with the tonight's exception being the two Grand Prix championship fights as the Royal Rumble winners, Dr. Edwards and Rachel Curtis were allowed to choose the stipulation instead. But you can... Uh, yeah. So there's gonna be definitely a great week, I know that about it. Some of those people, some will be doing their whatever they can. First cover of the night. Carly Earl trying to get a victory here. A very early victory, might I add, but... No such luck. Leg drop there from the Cybernate Knight. And follows that up with a knee drop, just utilizing that leg. And once again, knee drop missing though. Carl the Earl getting out of the way, lifting up. Pure strength on display here, dropping the cybernetic knight. I don't, I don't think the armor is going to be doing any effort whatsoever against the rope. And definitely not against a submission hold like this, able to escape from there. And now Chrome about to give. Carl the Earl of a taste of his own medicine, no, setting him all the way to the outside. Two powerhouses in the junior fighting division, definitely a very joyous occasion to see. Now fighting right next to the, right next to the announcement table, or uh, not really fighting, just sending Carl the Earl inside the ring. Back inside, both of the brawlers come, no, kick to the midsection, Crumb about to set up. 
Here comes the manhandle slam. Into the cover now. Shoulders down. We have one, we have a two, and shoulder up. Yeah, this tonight is definitely gonna be going to the fullest. 14 matches. That's gonna be, uh, I, I would honestly say more than three hours of wrestling action. Double underhook into a spin out power bomb. Beautiful mastery of a technique there from the Danish Jarl. Northern Light suplex not done yet. Keeps up the headlock, goes for a regular suplex as well. Into the cover now. Shoulder is down, shoulders are down. And no, really kicking out there. Incredible display. That's just pure willpower coming coming to kick in. But uh, whether or not it'll be enough. Regal power bomb into the cover. Carly Earl really trying to bring this match to a conclusion. No, right before a freak out. Escaping the package. Being picked up here quick for Steve Pantzes. Multiple ones, double underhook into a suplex toss. Technique and strength in one beautiful package. Only a one count though. Chrome has been taking the mo uh, mo most of the hit so far. He, he will need to kick in another gear here if he's hoping to have any so sort of victory against the Arl here. Able to evade now. Going for strike. Carly Arl. Even though a season, a season 2 brawler, you would have imagined he to be starting out in the professional martial arts division. But unfortunately, due to, due to his low scoring... Actually, was it that? Or was it that? No, it wasn't low scoring. It was Mr. Ace taking his position in the silver division due, due to an evolution match stipulation. The loser had to give up their position in the division and give it to the person who was from from the uh, 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 coming from the below division. Nonetheless, Carly Earl has been on fan, one fantastic brawler, one respectable brawler even. And even though fighting in the junior fighting division, still keeping on with the respect and acknowledging everyone who who just happens to be stand, uh, stepping is at the ring with him. German suplex from Krom. Takes out Jarl. Kick to the midsection. Lines up yet another manhandle slam. Hooks up the leg and this could be it. We have one, we have a two and kick out once again. Neither of these brawlers willing to give an inch to their opponent. And that's exactly what kind of a mentality every single one will be having tonight. Tonight the champion, the season champion will be decided. It's gonna be definitely, definitely gonna be needing an, 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 an attitude to not give up no matter what the opposition is. Here we go once again with the regal power bomb into the cover, two count and three. The cybernetic knight has been vanquished. No match for the Danish Brood. I don't, I don't know if Brood is an apt term here. For a Danish Lord would be more accurate. Lord of the Wilds. Absolutely a fantastic opener to the show tonight. The final show, the season finale. Carl the King securing the first victory of the night. Still 13 matches to come tonight. Looking with most excited as we get more, more and more into the show. Moving from the ju junior fighters to the professional martial, martial artists to the All-Star Series. Next up, we're gonna be getting Junior Fighting Tag Team action and exhibition match on this count. We have the Master and Student, Satoru and Green Cyclone, going up against the Turkish Giant, Yusuf Ahmed, and the legendary hero, Kazarian. Absolutely a fantastic start to the show with, with that previous match, and it's only gonna get better from here. 
right after this one, we will have the first of the championship matches. The men's junior fighting championship, Scorpio Scotty once again challenging Park Hercules for the belt. Definitely one for the history books, I would say. And right after that, it's gonna be a women's triple threat match. Bert the Valkyrie versus Wang Ling versus Aunt Teresa. Definitely not, not something you want to miss, especially if you happen to be Aunt Teresa supporter. Or a maniac, in other words. And let's... I'm thinking, I, I did not make a final choice here whether or not, but... No, yeah, no, that would, that would completely break the system here. I will, I will, I'm thinking about the scoring here, on because Pro Masters pay-per-view events always give additional points to those partaking in them, but... But maybe, maybe not tonight, well... I do not know, I should, I should have uh, paid more attention and actually... Wondered what the what the call would be here, but nonetheless we're gonna show show to go through and we're definitely gonna be doing just that. About to enter the ring here. A previous well a man who once or actually did he get the belt twice? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> Yeah, this is the quality you you know I get. I I, I unfortunately do not have info cards here, so. Team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from the other side of darkness, weighing in at 260 pounds, Satoru. But Satoru definitely has been fighting for the junior fighting belt at least twice, but at least uh, three times, if not three to four. Once going up against Scorpius Scotty, yeah, I think he actually defeated Scorpius Scotty back in, back at the time. Then losing the title, then regaining it, and then losing it to his student, his pupil, Green Cyclone. But he's he's not carrying a crutch over it. Why would he be carrying a crutch over that? That would be such a foolish thing to be doing. His partner representing the Orient Express from the Shang Dynasty, weighing in at 156 pounds, Green Cyclone. And here comes the mean green beatdown machine, a very proficient martial artist by, by at this point into the series. His legacy has grown. Over his entire time, uh, over, over the uh, uh, expenditure of has it been? It's been almost a half a year. He's be, he's been part of the show, almost half a year. So yeah, he Green Cyclo has a long long career already and very well established household name already. Let's see whether or not these two actually have any tag team. And they've been training to get her Green Cyclo more than happy to. Take any lessons Satoru has been giving, but let's see whether or not they have any tax team spirit. Weighing in at 235 pounds, Iron Man Kazarian. The legendary man Kazarian. Absolutely. A very tough, very powerful warrior. A man who has defeated all star brawlers. Who has earned the respect of the main eventer tonight, the Blue Brood? That that already. That, I do. I, I honestly do not need to say any anything more about that. Just knowing that the Blue Brood has his full acknowledgement 
it that's just and that should give you a from Istanbul, Turkey, weighing in at 495 pounds, Yosef Ahmed. That should give you a clue into how tough a person we are talking as speaking of tough tough, uh, tough persons, the Turkish chant, Yusuf Ahmed, the previous junior fighting champion before losing the title to the current holder Punk Hercules. One time champion, but still, we all knew that that would eventually come to him. Despite not having the belt, no doubt about it, he will still keep on fighting like a champion. But let's see what kind of a tag team personality he's gonna be having. Here we go, the bell has rung, and we're starting off the second match of the night. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brawl Mania, the season, fi season 3 finale of the of the show and like uh, coming into the live audience we have William coming in hello there glad to have you aboard and glad you could join to the season finale the live streaming event in this case yes this is brought to you live from Helsinki Finland the final show of season 3 the long awaited as we are currently going through exhibition matches before well this is the second exhibition match, right after this one, we will have the Junior Fighting Championship fight. Scorpius Scotty and Punk Hercules going head to head. But that will be right after this match. Let's see for how long these teams will be willing to beat each, beat each other up. Look at this lift off. Beautiful leverage here from the Kazarian. And with that makes the tag. Yusuf Ahmed now inside the ring, a big boot dropping down Satoru, a technical master. Have no faith. I don't. I don't know how Satoru is gonna be planning his. Once again, launching himself at pure nothing, but now makes the tag and tags in his pupil Green Cyclone, also a previous junior fighting champion, a one-time champion so far, just like Yusuf here. So this could be very interesting. Is it gonna be the power? Actually, it was. Yeah, if you remember, oh, looking up, count this, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and full ten beats of boat ran. Yes, if, if you remember a few weeks ago, Green Cyclone actually did lose his championship belt to Yusuf Ahmed in a triple threat elimination match. A very, very well fought, but unfortunately, ta taking Yusuf for granted. Sit out, jawbreaker, or a nearly jawbreaker, rather, as this duo keeps on fighting on the ringside. This could end in a count out. Let's see, we have a five count. Green Cyclo back inside the ring, but Yusuf still on the outside. Here he comes, very slowly. Back inside. And with that goes in and makes attack, the Kazarian is now into this in this fight. Beautiful springboard DDT there. With a stomp and now trying to get himself located onto the top rope. Here comes diving in with the knees and uh, not the knee but the elbow straight to the chest there. Heavy impact delivered. And now makes the tag. Green Cyclone in a very po poor position all the way on the other side of the ring. There's no way he'll be able to make a tag there. Or, or maybe rolling out of the way. Yusuf trying to go for a similar elbow drop. And now Green Cyclone flatliner. Drops him down. No, but Yusuf. Yeah, Yusuf is not a man you can count out that easily. And you could see Satoru trying to offer his hand. But clearly, everyone knowing that that's way too far away to even try to hope and make a successful tag. Beautiful suplex, a stalling suplex, just displaying that immense amount of strength this 495 pounder has. Locking up a crucifix power bomb, so close to tossing. Green Cyclone outside the ring here. Kasarian has been tagged in, and there goes the tag. Satoru as well now inside the ring as these two are set to go now a hero versus a villain 
springboard axe, and I don't know what he was doing there, but... Well, it didn't seem like it worked at all. Beautiful head scissors takedown. The master of the shadows, the lord of the darkness, the snake tongue, Satoru now manipulating the joint. Setting up. Kasaria once again about to flip him on his belly. There he goes. Landing face first on the canvas. Yeah, the fa fancy suit. Though elegant, it does not provide him much a reprise from this fight. Setting up. Here comes Kasarian with the revolution knee. Hooking up the leg. This could be it. The green cycle rushes in and saves his master from the fall. Kasarian tried to catch hold of green cycle there, but he himself providing to be a bit too slippery to be caught. Sending Satoru over the top rope. Heavy punts. Uh, another one, no. Yes, beautiful Enziguri. Satoru has been sent outside and with that, Kazarian makes the tag. Well, looks like Yusuf is planning to join on the ring side here. Catching hold of the head and smashing it right against the knee. Oh, and Yusuf get there getting tossed off. Oh, what a stiff. Elbow to the face, but able to snuck out of the way. Satoru now just waiting. Oh, a bit too soon there. Ooh, getting... No! Almost getting caught with the toke slam. Once again, twisting the arm. No one home for that one. Getting hold and... Oh, quick thinking there from Satoru. Once again, head scissors take down. It's absolutely wild how Satoru is able to... I mean, he's in the heavyweight. Ooh, beautiful roll out of the way, but... What is he doing? Creed Cyclone lining up. What is he? Oh, I cannot believe. A Cyclone bomb. I, I honestly cannot believe he was able to do that. That was... Once again, 495 pounds. Uh, I honestly cannot believe he could do uh, pull off a maneuver like that. Satoru now with insult to injury. Yeah, if you're if you do not understand pounds, so you're if you're just like me, 224 kilograms. That's how heavy a man we're talking about here. Kasarian about to get counted out here, but Satoru lifting him up. Beautiful swinging driver. It's heavy uppercut and Satoru just oh getting caught there in between rock and a hard place. Heavy uppercut once again, and there goes the tag again. Yeah, Green Cyclone and Satoru, despite their previous fight together, still able to work as a team. Still giving that master and pupil sense that honestly will be needed to do get a victory here. Green Cyclone allowing the tag to be made. Kasarian now inside. Beautiful head scissors into a standing shooting star. Kasarian rolling back up and Satoru tacked in. Ooh, solid drop kink. Yeah, once again, it, it absolutely amazes me every single time Satoru is able to lift himself back up. Lift himself up in a jump like that and maybe now could I be going for it? Yeah, there it is. The Cobra Glutz has been locked in. No, Yusuf coming in to break it up. Looks up the leg though, this good ending of the pinfall here. Once again, Yusuf coming in to break it, only a two count. And what is... Well, I don't know what the plan there was. And now, I, I do not know... Is he playing him for a fool? Well, he's definitely making him look like a fool. Forearm smashes straight to the face. No, knee lift to the midsection. Yusuf about to get counted out, but no, where is Satoru going? Does he think that Yusuf is the legal man getting the head but And here comes Kasarian on the top rope. This could hurt very much. Satoru caught at getting the missile drop kick to the face. Yeah, this tagged him. Well, there goes Yusuf back, back inside the ring. He's just getting back, in the, back onto the apron. Speaking of the apron, Kasarian just meeting it head first. 
shimming around and now they're just they're just having a stare down. What what is what are they doing? Have have they been mesmerized or what is going on where Sasoru makes his way back inside the ring first? Here comes Kazarian jumping in, but being caught immediately, lifted up. No beautiful escape. Reverse DDT. Taking the situation under control here. Picks up. Satoru and now trying to set him up in the tag, uh, in the team corner. There's the tag. Yusuf Ahmed, now the legal man, taking on a bit of speed here. Both of them are kick and close line into a elbow drop. Not done yet. Another elbow drop. A flowing with stomps. Beautiful tag team action from this non established team. And here we go. From the crowd, a reverse choker slam into the cover now. We have one, we have two. And you could see Satoru there, his eyes squinting. He was definitely feeling that. Oh, what a beautiful front flip back heel kick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe, maybe Green Cyclone has actually picked himself a good... good teacher this time around, someone who actually knows all. Oh, I don't know what he was thinking with that one, but there was no way he was going to be lifting up that amount of man again. Kazarian has been tacked in, rolls off. Gets struck down multiple times. Lifted up into a fireman's carry, no green cyclone escaping. Gets a kick. Another one, ducking out of the way. Kick to the midsection, sunset flip, power bomb, and with that makes the tag. Satoru once again made legal here, stomp right under the arm and setting up one more time with the cobra clutch. The snake has bitten in, and now it's only a matter of time. If it's a tap out, oh, it's so close! You can see the agony as this way he taps out. Kasarian taps out, meaning Satoru and Green Cyclone, master and student, getting into this, getting into the victory here. VIP Reigns here, jo joining into the live audience. Hello there. Well, welcome to Witness Brawl Mania Season 3 Finale. I don't have WWE 2K23. Well, I'll give you a little bit of spoiler here behind the scenes. I don't have it either. This is a full-on WWE 2K22 universe mode, but hey, that's neither here or there. It's basically still the same game. Nonetheless, here custom character winners. universe. And a great tag team victory for Satoru and Green Cyclone. Honestly, can't wait to see these two uh, continue on with this team that they have going on once we get to Season 4. Alright, it's time for the third match of the night, and this is gonna be first of the championship fights tonight. The women, uh, the men's junior, uh, forgive me, that, the men's junior fighting championship fight. Scorpius Scotty once again challenging Punk Hercules, the two of the toughest junior fighters right now. And with the champion's advantage, tonight's fight is gonna be an extreme rules fight. Now, yeah, very well fought there by. Give me just a second here to do 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 a thing. Because I'm uh, updating the. Even though the scoreboard does not really matter except for the top. Top three, but I still need to uh, uh, have uh, knowledge of the situation to announce the final scores. And 54. Right. Does the audience have uh, at this point a any any idea on or any opinion on who who is gonna be? Actually, I might as well uh, put it on the wall. So give me give me a 
Give me a second here. Question is who will be winning, winning the season three championship title? Senina Bochum, Anderson Montre, put it all right, Kathy Gardner. Uh, I'm getting ah, oh, there we go. Oh, I can only add four. Well, let's make it someone else then. Actually, no. If I can only have four, then it doesn't matter because we still have uh, uh, three other co uh, two other competitors still in this race. Oh, well. Well, if you have an opinion or if you're rooting for someone, then do let me know. The following contest. Yes, you heard it right. This is the men's junior fighting championship. And honestly saying these two, excluding Dr. Edwards, are the toughest male junior fighters. Right now, Scorpius Scotty, 89 points, and Punk Hercules, the defending champion, 88 points. So if there's a ever been a number one contender, it's definitely Scorpius Scotty tonight. Oh, having proven himself to be a uh, wonderful. A wonderful brawler and a wonderful champion, multiple times winning the Junior cha Fighting Championship. If he's able to do that tonight again, I will be nothing sort of impressed. The Time Traveler from the future phase land. I could say, I'm gonna wonder whether or not he has the advantage here of knowing how the fights are gonna be going. Has he seen the tapes? Has he, is he replacing someone? Would Punk Hercules be fighting the same style? And is... Yeah, I don't know, think about it. Scorpio Scotty just may have an unfair advantage. And again, if he comes from a futuristic way, uh, 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 post-apocalyptic phase land, I don't think they have the internet anymore. Yeah, okay, scratch that. We all, uh, well, mo most of the people fight here fair, so no, no need to assume that there's cheating going on. And the defending junior fighting champion, Punk Hercules, season two classic brawler. One of the hardest strikers to ever grace us with his presence. Actually, I heard from uh, going into this match, Punk Hercules was actually uh, taking a few more training sessions with the Olympia legend Bartacus. Uh, unfortunately, Bartacus could not be with us tonight, uh, taking side of the ring, uh, ringside here due to the match stipulation being extreme rules. Referee has banned any other personnel from taking part in this, but nonetheless. Nonetheless, at least the man of the hour is here. Introducing the challenger from the wasteland. Weighing in at 225 pounds, Scorpion Scotty. And introducing the champion, from Athens, Greece, weighing in at 230 pounds. He is the men's junior fighting champion, the urban gladiator, Anthony Punk Hercules.
one more time. The men's bronze title is on the line for the last time in this season. Both of these men have previously carried with pride. And not about it, the winner is going to be carrying with even more pride. Well, at least the challenger seems to be very nice and cozy uh, getting into this match. And here we go, the bell has rung. We're starting off the third match. And the first of the championship matches. As rem a reminder, there's going to be a total of six championship fights tonight. Uh, the men's and the women's junior fighting championships. Professional martial artists championships as well as the Grand Prix championships in increasing order and in increasing value as they go uh, and by the end of the night the season championship will have been decided by the overall scoring knee to the back there from Scorpio Scotty already starting out maybe, maybe he was he was uh, in the right kind of mindset going with a little bit of chill Looking up the bow and arrow hold here. Stretching and driving the knees. No cover goes for the cover, breaks it up. Punk Hercules is able to escape and with that allows him to get going with his strikes. Sending the challenger into the corner now. Extreme rules fight here, so no disqualification. Scraping the eyes onto the top rope. Yeah, this is a classic Punk Hercules. Getting a punch to the midsection. Catching hold of the challenger again, sending him in the corner. Is he gonna go for goes for a kick and again just yeah he's gonna be counting uh, taking out the eyes uh, real fast at this pace. Uh, but but uh, that's his choice uh, going into the extreme fight, extreme rules fight. He full on would have acknowledged that the, uh, this is the kind of man he's fighting. Scorpius cutting now with the advantage. Beautiful pop up flapjack. The challenger is taken down and now crossing the hamstring. Another one driving the knee multiple times, riding, riding underneath the leg. And now Scotty making his way to the ringside. Looking underneath, there's all kinds of fun toys right there. Prepare just for tonight. And Scorpio Scotty has chosen the kendo stick. Going for smacks. Punk Hercules able to fight it out, goes for the suplex into the cover, keeping the face strap, only a one count. Fight's gonna continue on getting the sneeze, uh, smashing the knee against the face. Punk Hercules stepping outside, gesturing, here comes Scotty, catching all of Punk Hercules, getting a punch again for interrupting his treasure hunting. Stiff punch, going for chops. Blowing up the air from the lungs. Ooh, what a reversal. A full-on fistful from that cybernetic arm. Backbreaker into a neckbreaker combination. As the challenger makes his way back inside the ring. There are no countouts, so the champion does not need to... Oh, he gets the kendo stick. Preparing to deliver even more punishment. Smacks it across the back and now to the leg. C comes crashing in against one another. The champion sent... Against the barricade. Pulls on the shoulder now. Trying to dislocate the arm or at least try to soften it up. Ooh, striking to the jaw there with the boot and now going for a colossal clutch. It won't end the match, but definitely a good way to strain your opponent. Setting up, lines up a neck breaker. The champion taking control of the situation one, once more. And now the champion with the kendo stick smacks it across the face. Another one breaking it on impact. Here comes the challenger close line. Just waiting, preying on their opponent. Looking for any whatsoever opportunity to uh, strike and now challenging him to get back inside. And looks like the champion definitely got, got more, more than he bargained for. The face is a bit blooded up there, setting up on the middle rope. Punk Hercules lines up a bit of momentum here. Ooh, catching hold of the nose. And with the left red, he uses the middle rope to his advantage. Once again, climbing to the top. Comes diving in with the elbow to the back. Definitely a good strategy there. Targeting the shoulders, goes for the cover. Two count and kick out at two. 
the challenger Scorpion Scotty in this fight still, but looks like the champion is about to put a stop to that right here. Military press into an uppercut. Goes for the cover, hooks up the leg and wait a minute, using the middle rope as rev leverage, the referee calling that. Yeah, despite this being extreme rules, they are still, you still cannot do that, still not allowed. But definitely the future shock DDD is still allowed, two count, no, shoulder up. I would have wagered that would have been it. Another devastating heavy impact right to the uh, face. The crowd is chanting for more. As these two gladiators just give on more and more uh, to, what, uh, to each other. And now the challenger with a steel chair misses it entirely. As the champion is able to force it out of his... Uh, forcing the knees uh, or force it, forcing the knee to meet the face. Face to me meet the knee. Hooks him up. Suplex. Beautiful, beautiful display of strength there. Catching hold of the arm here, going for stomps, right, two stomps. Disassembling the hand, and definitely the right choice to target the uh, still, uh, still living hand. The one that's not cybernetic, you know. Ooh, what a beautiful neck breaker, unfortunately. Landing right onto that steel chair and right onto the par poor part of it. That's gonna be cutting you up. Setting up the scorpion death lock. The champion in a very poor position so far away from the ropes. Look at this power though, able to lift himself up and able to toss the challenger off. Sending out, uh, sending out over the top ropes, stiff punts. I gotta wonder how much the champion is able to uh, go through anymore. Setting up, neck breaker. And with that the challenger has been sent outside. Yeah, the Scorpio Scotty definitely giving giving a good match to the champion tonight. Like, uh, if he's able to keep up with the momentum here, he's definitely going to be walking home with the title once again. Looking underneath, gets another candle. Ooh, come on, that was a low blow. Right in between the legs with the kendo stick. Oh, that's... Oh, I felt that one. I, I, I do not feel happy about it. The champion now with the kendo stick. Smacking it across the face as the two are getting closer and closer to the ramp here. Ooh, another smack to the face and breaking it on impact. Getting closer. Setting up. Leg drop bulldog. And looks like Scorpion Scotty has also busted his face open. Setting up. A spinning sidewalk slam. Getting hold of the arm. Trapping it up. Well, I don't know if that's going to be causing any pain, but it definitely could be a potential way to damage the cybernetics. Swinging neck breaker against the champion. The challenger picking him up. Going for strikes across the chest. Keeping up with this unrelenting combination of, of attack. Shoot kicks now. Following the beautiful spin kick. Straight to the face, and once again looking for a weapon. Is it gonna be another kendo stick? No, this time a sledgehammer striking the arm once again, and another one just dismembering the champion who's completely locked up here, not able to fight back, whatever. That is just absolutely horrifying to see. That's definitely uh, sledgehammers were not made for that. Ooh, the champion coming back with a neck breaker, but. Uh, yeah, I do not think the champion's chances of getting a victory here definitely went down the train right there. Champion trying to get the steel chair, but getting locked up once again. Future shock. The future is shocking, and the future is right here. Scorpio Scotty, no, shoulder up right before a free count. The fight continues on. The champion unwilling to give up, unwilling to give the challenger, the belt here, the moment in the spotlight, lifted up, military press into an uppercut. <laughs> Gonna be surprised if this concludes the fight here. We have one, we have two, and we have a... yeah, I knew it, shoulder up. <coughs> but Gurkle is preparing to strike once again, lifting him up, power slam, no! Club to the back and able to escape. Electric chair, no. Another reversal. Both of them realize the situation they're in right now. Trying to lift up in a... Yeah, 
Punk Hercules tried to go for electric tear of his own, but Scorpius got he able to escape himself. Backdrop, suplex now. Beautiful, beautiful uh, series of reversals there. Both of them, both the challenger as well as the champion, realizing that this com comes down to the next big strike. It's gonna be bringing this to an end and now pulling on the arm, twisted, twisted around the top rope, lining up, an alley-oop, catching hold of the head, keeping the headlock going, suplex toss, beautiful display of strength there, catching hold of the chair, and now just taking the opportunity to, I don't know, contemplate, take it all in, you have all the time in the world, Set, no, sets up in between the top and the middle rope. I don't know whether or not he's dashing it, but ooh, what a tri wait, face driver. Once again, another reversal. These two have definitely kicked in yet another gear, going for the highest possible setting up. Neck breaker. Stomp right onto that arm. Being picked up here, lifted up, military press one more time into the uppercut. I believe that slides out for the challenger. Rolls up with the leg and going for the cover. Two and three. Punk Hercules securing the victory after a very grueling fight here. A very grueling fight, you have no idea. Well, if you just uh, we saw the same thing that I did, you have plenty good idea. The champion once again standing tall at the monumental victory. And I assume a bit of a disappointment here for the challenger. He, this is not how he expected the night to go, but hey, that's just the name of the game. You win, you lose. Following that up, we will have the fourth match of the night, our Triple Threat Junior fighting match between Bert the Valkyrie, Wang Ling and Aunt Teresa. But before that, uh, due to the bugginess of this game, we need to do a bit of backpedaling, you know, get out of the show and get back into the show, but we will continue right now. A Triple Threat match with three of the very very stable names here. Oh boy. And they, have, they definitely need to be giving their A, A game if they're hoping to top what we just witnessed with the Junior Fighting Championship. A very, very hard well fought fight. With the victory secured there, right there, Punk Hercules now coming coming up to 96 points. Uh, actually, there's a mistake. I earlier said I said Dr. Edwards had 98 points. That that's actually incorrect. He has 99 points. I don't know how, how that got in there, but most likely a typo. But yeah, the total score of Dr. Edwards is 99. Nonetheless, Punk Hercules, if we exclude Dr. Edwards, Punk Hercules is the undisputed junior fighting champion of season 3. And Scorpion Scotty with that comes to 93 points. Let's see whether or not we'll be later, later on uh, tonight getting the undisputed. Women's Junior Fighting Champion, Burnstorm, the current champion holder, 86 points, but going up against uh, Sophia Allen once again, once more. Triple Threat Match, making her way to the ring, representing the Viking Raiders from Asgard, Burn, the White Rain. Fighting tonight as a singular competitor once more. The Valkyrie Bird. 
carrying the Viking pride and the Viking rage inside her. Definitely a person who has proven herself to be more than capable to be taking part in this series. And with real great excitement. And I'll be welcoming her back once the fourth season starts. an opportunity to take part in Brawl Mania exhibition match, you can bet yourself that Wang Ling jumped at the opportunity. This is the time you want to be around. This is when you uh, showcase on what you have learned throughout the series, throughout the, these many months, these many episodes, these many hours of fighting. Tonight is the finale. Tonight is the premium, premium showcase of all the talent and all the respect you have earned along the way. Yes, and the previous junior fighting champion in the women's division, and she's definitely looking very much like to her uh, previous self uh, before the time she became a champion. Definitely back to her more excitable, more chaotic self. Glad, glad, honestly speaking, glad to see Teresa back to this kind of personality. She was very disturbing with the, uh, while carrying the belt, so. I, I, uh, by disturbing, I mean not not in an excitable way, not in a good uh, mannerism, but just always thinking, you know. Definitely prefer this Wilder Teresa. These three women have definitely made the season three of Pro Masters a very special thing. Not just these three. Later on, we will have. More, more women talent coming up. Actually, right after this match, it's gonna be the women's junior fighting championship. Sophia Allen and Burnstorm going head to head. And later on tonight, on the 12th match of the night, Rachel Curtis of the junior fighting division will be fighting off against uh, Gaffy Gardner, the Grand Prix champion. Going for punches. Now on Teresa. No, Wang Ling getting the kick. Takes out Teresa and sends her outside. This is gonna be a fight between an Eastern martial artist and a Viking warrior. I mean, who, 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 who would have ever thought that we, we would get to experience something like this? Constant knife edge jobs in the corner, going for stomps. Wang Ling completely helpless, meanwhile, Teresa inspecting the ropes. I have no idea. But she was thinking with that, but she's getting Northern Light suplexed. Bert the Valkyrie in full form has taken down both of the her fellow competitors tonight already. Coming in, dives in with the clothesline. Trying to catch hold on Wang Lin, just full on unaware of the danger in front of her. Ooh, well maybe she was. Double knee face breaker takes down the Valkyrie, setting up a neck breaker as well, Wang Ling. So it's a good sort of technical mastery here, and that's exactly what she's been working on as of late. Trying to master a few holes, trying to ooh, speaking ooh, back break there, and being now caught between the two hip toss though saves her, and now going after on Teresa counter, kick and stomps and ooh another big kick to the face, jumping hip attack misses. Gonna be feeling that for a while now. Wang Ling catching hold. German suplex. On Teresa. Still be feeling a bit cold tonight. Not, uh, back to, uh, not back to her usual antics. But maybe starting here. Back suplex drop. Onto the top rope. 
And now preparing to come in and strike. No, what is, what is, okay, she's back to that then. Missing the springboard and security bird, the Valkyrie catching hold. Setting up, yeah, double underhook, oh, sits out, goes for a wing clipper. How apt. Wang Ling comes in and breaks it up. A power submission hold, oh no, Wang Ling being caught from behind, sent in the corner. But able to run away uh, from, from before any harm came her way. Sent over the top rope and now Bert the Valkyrie. Setting up Teresa, kicks her. Here comes Wang Ling back inside the ring, rolls out of the way of nothing, I suppose. Just rolls out of the way and once again taunting at her opponents to come and get her and Bert just standing there mesmerized. Yeah, she should strike when she's uh, lying on top of the ropes there. Springboard moonsault. Yeah, Wang Ling, ex excellent high flyer, but still needs to master a uh, mastery over her holds. After all, her her uh, flying block blockbuster is not going to be uh, catching hold of anything if she's unable to catch her. Ooh, suicide dive to the outside, taking out Bert the Valkyrie. Ooh, getting a gift kick to the face there though. Stomp and Bert now setting up, driving the knee with the single leg camel clutch. On the ring side, the match won't end here, but uh, well, you know, Wang Ling able to fight it off and catching hold of Bird, sending her across the ring side. No, she's gonna be stopping, falling right there, setting up herself with a submission hold. A beautiful cross face on Teresa coming to here. No, she's not. Oh, I thought she was changing momentum here, but no, she's. She actually uh, let Bird, uh, or rather Bird, was able to escape her way out of that once. Airplane spin into a TKO. Classic on Teresa. And speaking of classic, going for a bite now. Nas na very nasty there. Catching hold, and looks like we're going to be getting a tag team action. A double leg sweep. Takes out Bird and now it's Wang Ling against Aunt Teresa. Teresa sending her back inside the ring. But Wang Ling one step ahead. Look at this power, sit down, power bomb. Beautiful strength there. Picking up Teresa. Gets countered. Teresa with the advantage sending Bird outside who just made her way back inside the ring. Forearms smash to the head. The Taiwanese martial artist in a very poor position. Jawbreaker. And now Bird challenging Teresa, but I don't think she's even noticing. She's too busy with her current victim. Oh, there she comes. Cross body. Onto the apron she goes and comes in diving with missing with the leg drop. Heavy impact, but no one home for that one. DDT. And Bert now setting herself up on the middle rope. Divine hammer strike. Force hammer has come crashing down. And with that, Aunt Teresa is knocked out. Going for the cover. One, two, and the shoulder up. Probably need to be delivering at least one of those. And she just might be doing that. But better watch out. Wang Ling comes in. Tornado bomb tosses, tosses her to Teresa. Goes for the cover now. Teresa still coming to. We have one, two, and a kick out. Wang Ling taking control of the situation here in this triple threat match. Double under who clocked in into a backbreaker. Picking up the pieces again. Super kick. Just clean on launch right there. Kick to the back. Is to ooh, counter there. On oh, Teresa now preparing the strike and here comes her classic once more airplane spin into a TKO. Double strike on the head first make them dizzy and then take them out. Bird comes sliding back inside the ring and now on oh, Teresa just sitting there not doing anything. Ooh missile drop kick though. Did he, did, he almost, did he almost look like he hit anything? Missing the leg, uh, uh, leg drop again, the springboard leg drop. Wang Ling has come back to, and what is Teresa doing? Acting like a 
angry child. Well, she's gonna be getting a uh, face full of fists for that one. Wang Ling taking advantage of a downed opponent. Drop kick. And there goes Teresa. And now Bird getting a face full of turnbuckle. Get looked up. Look at this. Springs her around. Face buster. Heavy impact delivered. And these three women definitely showcasing what it means to be on top of their game. Stop rope moonsault into the cover now. Teresa getting back too, but will she make it? No. Getting a kick out instead. Here comes Wang Ling. Sling blade not done yet. Basement drop kick. Solid combo there. Now launching herself and preparing to strike with all her might. Blockbuster landing on Bird, but unfortunately unable to connect with the neck breaker. Another jawbreaker from Teresa. Oh, and here. Oh, breaking the back again. That's going to be destroying the dress at this point. Smashing the head against the turnbuckle. Teresa with the full control of the fight now. Wang Ling is downed. Multiple stomps onto the chest. And now coming in, leg drop. Hooks up the leg and we could be getting a victory here. Two count and no, breaks it up. Wang Ling still in this fight. Beautiful springboard, unfortunately no one home for that one. Lines up, heavy chop. On the apron again and about to come in, striking with the... Here comes the blockbuster, oh once again. Landing right on the body, but still fa failing to get hold of the head. Bird sneaking in for victory, only a two count. Yeah, you're gonna pick your right time in a triple threat match like this. It's all about the most opportunistic brawler getting the victory. When you see an opportunity to end the match, you take it, no matter what it takes. And you try to keep it going for as long as possible. Beautiful backbreaker once again from Wang Ling. And now double teaming from Teresa and Ling. Ooh, Enziguri hitting its mark. Bird dropping down Teresa and now. No, gets dropped down by Ling. Picked up. And there goes Super Kick. Dropping down Bird and now coming after Teresa. There it goes, Blockbuster almost hitting again. But, well, she's down. A heavy impact coming. Hooks up the leg. It's amazing that even to this point, two and three, Wang Ling securing a victory with that. It's absolutely amazing that 57 episodes in, and we've still seen Wang Ling only once successfully uh, connect with the uh, blockbuster. Nonetheless, a victory is a victory, and whatever it takes for a win, that, that's exactly what was delivered tonight. of the replays here still going on here is your winner Lang Lang a very very excellent victory for Wang Ling tonight well fought by all, all participants no but not about that but Wang Ling definitely establishing herself in the grandest stage of them all she is one competitor you have to keep your eyes open for when we get to season four. Coming up to the fifth match of the night, it's gonna be one on one last woman standing match. Sophia Allen challenging Burnstorm for the Junior Fighting Championship title. The last woman standing ruling, of course, well, we'll get to that soon enough. We'll see what this match is all about, but uh, let me tell you, this is it for the fate of Hardet. Yes, actually coming back, coming back to the... Coming back to the uh, Punk Hercules winning, or successfully retaining his title, and now with 96 points... No. Despite that, he's not undisputed champion. Just because 
uh, Dr. Edwards will be facing off against Cutie by Cook in a championship fight and that will already guarantee him a, win a winning position in the junior fighting division but so close not the champion but a winning position Of course, if uh, Dr. Edwards manages to defeat Cutie Pie, then that means that he'll he'll be g g getting the will be getting getting uh, moved into the Grand Prix uh, uh, the All Star Division. The following contest is a last woman standing match and is for the women's junior fighting. Championship! All right, and here we go. Starting off with the second championship fight, and this one for the women's junior fighting championship. The challenger, the challenger once again, representing the thrill seekers, Sophia Allen, one of the most extreme competitors in the women's division overall. A one very thrilled for this fight. Going into this last woman standing match, the rules are very simple. There are no pinfalls, nor submissions, nor disqualifications. The only thing that matters is that you manage to keep your opponent down for a full ten count. You cannot put your you cannot put your weight on them or attack them at the time. They just need to be lying down for a full ten count. Of course, extreme rules are not applied, so weapons and any any other harsher me methods are not allowed but other than that it's a free free reign and it's definitely gonna be one interesting test of character here both for the champion as well as the challenger speaking of the champion here comes the junior fighting champion as well as one of the greatest champions of season three overall I've said this many times before but she's just an absolutely fantastic brawler the lo one of the longest time reigning champions with, uh, I would say uh, the most uh, most successful amount of title defenses on her belt Introducing the challenger from Auckland, New Zealand, Sophia Allen. And introducing the champion from Aberdeen, Scotland, she is the women's junior fighting champion, Birdstar. The fire is definitely burning inside both the champion as challenger as we get into this bronze title fight. The junior fighting championship title once again on the line for the last time for in the season three. Tonight we will we will know which one of, whether or not Burnstorm earns the the honor of being the undisputed junior fighting champion. Here we go. The bell has rung and we're starting off. This last woman standing match. I think I previously forgot to mention with, with the men's junior fighting championship title is that the holder of the title is uh, by the end of the uh, show, by, by the end of the 13th match, is awarded. Well, I suppose at this point they are already awarded the, the 10 points. The junior fighting champion earns 10 points for holding the belt. And the same rule applies to the silver title as well as the gold title. Professional martial arts champions will earn themselves 25 points. And Grand Prix champions a total of 35 points. So uh, co counting that, you could definitely, you could uh, shake up the situation very, very nicely. 
If that's going, going, going back to Punk Hercules. Now currently reigning with 106 points. Actually, yes. Depending on how the final match will go. Uh, the final championship match. Dr. Edwards vs. Cutie by Cook later on tonight. He might be uh, Dr. E not Dr. Edwards, but... But Punk Hercules might just be crowned the undisputed junior fighting champion. And same could be happening Burnstorm to here tonight if she's able to retain the title. There is no woman who is anywhere close to her situation. We're talking about 86 points in the junior fighting division, in the women's junior fighting division. And here we go. The champion is down and the referee has started the count. If she's... Oh, she goes for the attack. That will reset the count and the referee will start all over again. Interesting choice there, but uh, must have, she must have realized that this match could not be over. Yeah, Sophia Allen, the runner-up currently uh, to the uh, title with only 63 points. So even if she's able to get the championship title, she will not be considered an undisputed champion. Getting already to a seven count, Sophia laughing at... The champion and the champion, they get the opportunity to get back up to her feet, but the challenger still keeping up with the heat here. In a moment like this, in a, in a last woman standing match, and uh, very apt that we have uh, two very hot spirited brawlers taking part in this uh, final match for, for the title here. Uh, there, there's a pro proverb that I like, want to use here. A candle that burns twice as bright lasts only half as long and that's definitely the kind of mentality mentality that both of these brawlers need to have in this specific fight you, this is all about endurance and over uh, la lasting your oh, la lasting longer than your opponent the challenger is still down at a six count seven count still down we could be no she rolls up and stops the count there Going for already a 8 counter, the champion now double under who into a storm zero. Heavy impact, the finishing maneuver of Burnstorm. Not done yet, lines herself up in preparation on the top rope, no, drops down. Yeah, you can see the challenger is struggling to breathe, she's trying to muster whatever strength she has still in her body. But it looks pretty hopeless. Up to a seven count and the match could come to a conclusion right now. Eight count only. And the Burnstorm noticing he, she was about to get back up to her feet. Not about to let that happen. Stomping right onto the face and now sets up the arm. Jumps right onto it. Being picked up here. Double knee face breaker. Yes, if, you, if you're wondering, Rachel Kerr is the, man, the woman who's going up against Kathy Gartner. Even though she's part of the junior fighting division, she only has 61 points. So it, no matter what, how that match comes to a conclusion, she, she will not be affecting the junior fighting division on the women's side. Beautiful toss off there. Sophia Allen tossing the champion down and the, the count out can still happen. It doesn't matter where in the arena you are, as long as you're lying down on the ground. Ring or uh, the ground. Or even outside of the arena, as long as your back is on the ground, or your your well, not necessarily back. If your stomach or back is on the ground, you, you will be counted out. Getting back up to her feet, though, up to an eight count. That both of these women have been already experienced. That both of these women have been going for heavy strikes. Sophia escaping, setting up inverted DDT, takes down the champion. I just cannot wait for Sofia to be setting up. Oh, sending the champion over the top. Right beside this. Uh, right beside our announcement table here. And the count has started once more. And Sofia already celebrating her victory here. A bit of premature, but... Hey, whatever gets the job done. We have five count now. Halfway through already. Seven, the champion gets back up and the count is stopped. The fight is gonna continue and... Ooh, sending the challenger into the steel steps. 
and looks like the champion believes that this that was enough to keep Sofia down. Or maybe she's just giving her a graceful period of resting up, I don't know, but that would be a re really foolish maneuver. In a fight like this, you do not want to give your opponent any sort of uh, uh, chances to rest up. And this is exactly what Burnstorm is currently doing. We have 8 count, maybe. 9 count? Yeah, he gets back up. Yeah, taking as much time as he needed. Kim P caught from behind. Ooh, driving the elbow to the chest. As the challenger is down once again. I don't care how hard you think you strike your opponent down. If you're constantly letting them rest up, that's gonna be coming down biting you. Honestly, a good tactic in this is to go as unrelenting as possible. Do not give your opponent any sort of rest. Any sort of chances for rest. Yeah, there you see, it was only a 8 count this time. You, you gotta keep on striking and ensure that the opponent has no chances of getting up. William here com commented the show has been awesome. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. I, I really much appreciate it. Uh, I'm do uh, doing this uh, uh, for the common pleasure, for the common enjoyment. So glad that you're all also able to enjoy this. As, uh, I don't know if that's as much as I am, but I'm definitely enjoying this so far. I know it's going to be getting even more enjoyable. Sophia Allen climbing to the top. Setting up. Coast to coast drop kick. The finishing blow. Yeah, you can see the champion is definitely out of it now. Let's see whether or not that was enough. Championship here on the line. The challenger. Well, cra uh, cracking her knuckles now. Oh, what is he? She's stopping the car. What is she doing? I mean, she's doing exactly what I tol tol told her to do, but... I don't I, I don't know. R really gotta question the choice here. You already de delivered a heavy impact with a drop kick. You, you would not need to go and uh, wear her down more. Well, with that, the count has been reset, and let's see. Let's see whether or not that was enough. Sophia definitely fit. Yeah, she's wiping her feet off her. She believes this is it. We're up to a six count. Oh, once again stopping the count and getting the leg caught there. Yeah, she was playing possum. She was just waiting. She knew that Sophia would come in and strike again. And now the champion about to give her a taste of her own medicine. Setting up. Triangle too called here. Pulling on the arm, looking up the head scissors as well. In a very torturous position. Good strategy, but gives Sophia the opportunity to get back up to her feet. Oh, you, you cannot believe that she's down by that. Well, the referee started the count and... Burnstorm definitely looks like she's not acting up. Yeah, picking up the champion. Yeah, and there she goes, kick to the midsection. Yeah, you cannot let yourself be fooled like that. The challenger being sent outside. And the champion, I don't know what she was doing there, but... Seems like a waste of energy. Once again, giving, giving the challenger an opportunity to rest up. If, if the champion is playing possum multiple times, then she must realize that the challenger is also... To, uh, taking this opportunity to rest up. Getting back inside the ring now. Cat being caught. Headlocked. And the champion does absolutely nothing. Doesn't take the advantage. Going for a strike here. Beautiful kick to the chest. Yeah, they, they act... Yeah, blowing the final kiss. They actually be believe that the softest of the strikes... It's enough to take them down. Five, well, getting to a six count. And does it look like Sofia is gonna be trying to break this count up? Eight. Yeah, eight count. Gasp, grasping the rope and getting back up, but swinging neck breaker. Not done yet. Handspring crossbody.
And once again, preemptive. Yeah, there she goes, breaking up the count again. Now declaring it's over. Let's see. Nope. No, she doesn't. Drop kick to the back. Yeah, I honestly kind of wonder. So, uh, some of these uh, brawlers do not plan ahead. They don't have any uh, tech, uh, technical. This, at this point, this is all about humiliating your opponent more than anything. Had she not uh, prevented the two previous counts, this would have already been a 10 count. Get into a 6 and now blowing the kiss again. And once again stomps. Breaking up the count and having to start all from, all from the beginning. But maybe she has a plan here. No, she gets kicked again. And Burn Storm lining up once again. Storm Zero. As he's not done yet, it seems like. Catching hold of the challenger, sending her into the corner. Turning her around. What is she doing? Well, Sophia escape. Ooh, gets dropped down. Another elbow to the face and sling blade. That definitely built up some good amount of momentum here, but still picking up her and sending into the corner. What is she doing? No, once again, Sophia escaping. Catching hold from behind. Wait, look, take down. The challenger taking advantage of the situation, turning it around and dropping the champion right on their face. Three, Getting up to a... Four, the count keeps going up once again. Yeah, Birdstorm definitely tried to make for some kind of a comeback here, but... Seven, see, that just ended up wasting a good amount of energy from her. Ooh, picking the leg. Sophia's too close to the sun there. Staying too close to the champion there for her own good. Getting punched multiple times. Trying to break the face in, I think. I tried to break the nose, or I don't know, trying to bust it open potentially. Taking down the leg. And once again, she thinks that it's come on, Sophia. She just picked your leg to drop you down. You must realize that was not enough to uh, take out all her energy, all her reserves. And this is one of the toughest female contenders there are. There have been. Right there, standing right on the top of the game. With legends like Gaffy Gardner, Marfa Baker, Magic Maggie. Five, six, and we're getting to a six count now. Seven, Up to a seven count, let's see. Eight. Nope, able to able beat the odds. Going for strikes. Sending Burnstorm into the corner now and dropping her down to the bottom turnbuckle, stomping right onto the chest. This good. She's lining her up and preparing once more. Here she comes one more time, coast to coast. Incredible athletic display, not to mention just throwing all caution in the wind. That mood could definitely uh, ba backfire on you ha at the moment's notice. Three. It looks like Sophia is now now finally uh, ready to set, uh, set this one aside and ready to uh, let the count roll down. I would be surprised. Yeah, I do not see Burnstorm moving at all. we are 8 count now. Up to 9. That, oh, she gets back up. Still managing to beat the 10 count, but only by one. The end is looming. If Sophia Allen is able to keep up with the heat for a bit longer, she will have claimed the title. And uh, not, not only that, but rubbed away Burnstorm's greatest honor, the undisputed junior fighting championship. We're up to five count. Halfway there now. Sophia just waiting. Yeah, only a eight count. Have to keep up with the momentum here. Swinging neck breaker. Once again, hand springing and dropping down the whole body. Beautiful athletic. A beautiful. Uh, like that's just a full on acknowledging where you are and where your opponent is. Cute, ri uh, cute. Good ring IQ right there. 
Burnstorm definitely still trying. She's trying to muster up the strength needed to get him back up. Yeah, beating the eight count. Or beating the nine count rather. Sending the challenger all outside. Slides outside herself. No, she goes. Yeah, that, that right there is just using up energy for no good reason. Well, the challenger is down once again, but... Considering how things have been going, I do not think she's, uh, there's any reason for Burnstorm to assume that this fight is over. Yeah, and in the front row we have people just eyeing at the champion, wondering what she's doing. She's t hey, she has her back turned on her opponent here, so we have 9 count beating the 10 count just right before the end. There's Sling Blade. Flowing that up, there goes the drop kick. Catching hold, crossing the arm. There are no count outs here on the ringside, so and we get a bit of a bit of a broadcasting problem. There we go. It should be now taken care of. Bit of bit of a lag there. My my apologies there if the if it came, but hopefully not, nothing too serious. Yes, we're still still rolling. Getting up to a six and seven count. The challenger is still down. Up to a nine count, beats the ten count. And here comes the champion again. Striking first and taking the opportunity. Beautiful German suplex and there she goes back inside the ring. I'm not sure heavy impact delivered, but I gotta question this. Well, Sofia definitely has been worn out. Both of them have been worn out. I'm uh, uh, at this point. It's a wonder both of them are still going. I eight count now. We have nine count, and she rolls back up to her feet. Yeah. Ooh, suicide dive. Not hitting anyone. That might have allowed Sofia to get the upper hand right there. A foolish. Oh, getting back up to her feet now. Catching hold, lifting up. Slams her down with a scoop slam. Sitting up and jumps right onto the arm. Crushing it even more. And setting up. Missing all, once again the triangle choke. Poor camera angle here. Look at this. Very horrible strain. Sophia trying to fight her way out of this one. But no, she lets her go. Burns from letting her go. I suppose the damage was done there and... You get you get really mad with Sophia trying to kick out so fiercely. Up to a five count now. Seven goes there. This could be the end. No, only a eight count. Sophia, despite that, despite that submission hold, Sophia still has managed to recover herself. Catching hold and sending the champion back inside the ring. Must have realized that fighting outside of the ring is more of a hazard than anything. Catching hold of the knee. Crossing it right against the mat. And yeah, she definitely felt that one. The champion is down. She is trying, she is trying. The leg is kicking, but... Yeah, and there comes the laugh. And that was exactly what Burnstone was waiting for. Goes for the kick, here she comes. This is it. Storm Zero one more time. Just waiting for the opportunity. Oh, she's not done yet. Kicking out one more time, double underhook. Another Storm Zero, that has got to be it. No, what is she doing? She's picking her up again. Is she seriously gonna go for a third one? Ooh, oh. Well, I feel like that, that... Yeah, that was just... I do not know what the champion is thinking. Two Storm Zeros in quick success and not done with those. Allowing Sophia Allen to get back up to her feet. That was a really interesting choice. And that could have definitely cost her the championship right here. They are 8 count, yeah, no, Sofia catching her, ooh, elbow to the top of the head, ooh, kick, kick by the champion there, drops down the challenger, well, she could be out now, 
Burn Storm definitely declaring it over. No, double stomp to that uh, mid-sex and picks her up. The fight is gonna continue. Ooh, forearm smaster from the challenger. Kick to the back. Yeah, the fight is gonna continue after all. Both of them realizing that. Yeah, this is just an act. They're, both of them are acting at this time, not leaving anything to a chance. Catching hold, a solid kick to the back. Picking up the champion, Sophia Allen now. Hooks her up, and this could be the finishing blow right here. Ooh, or maybe not. Knee to the top of the head, Burnstorm. No, gets sent into the corner. If she's gonna be doing what I think she's gonna be doing, then this is it. Yeah, there she goes once again, firing those stomps. Sets up the champion. And one more time with the riskiest maneuver in her uh, entire arsenal. There she comes. Coast to coast drop kick. There's no way there's any life left in the champion after that one. Getting her away from the ropes. Referee coming to make sure that she's down. Yeah, she's not moving one bit, and Sophia starting to celebrate here once again. She better watch out. She better take a bit of spacing here. Burst or might be just might be the type that traps hold of your leg and you uses your own body as a climbing tool. Well, we're up to eight count, a nine count. I think this is it. At long last. The last woman standing, and with that, the new junior fighting champion, Sophia Allen. What an absolutely grueling matchup. Both of these women delivering strike after strike after strike of heavy impacts. But ultimately, the young talenter was left victorious. What a great victory and what a way, way, great way to cap the junior fighting saga with Sophia Allen as the bronze title holder. A very hard earned victory here, but at long last, the title is hers. With that, we are done with the Junior Fighting Division for tonight. Next up, we have the main, uh, the Professional Martial Arts Division, starting with the Exhibition Shows. First up, we have a Fatal 4-Way Tables Elimination Match. A match of choice called in by Big Ham, Hammond Nelson, who's gonna be facing off against Outlaw Casey, Captain Cooper, and Coach Leo. Season 1 Classic characters and definitely the cream of the crop here. But before getting into the match, we need to exit the show because previous one was a championship fight, you know this. So here we have the sixth match of the night. And uh, well, after this, it's, we are going to be reaching the halfway point of the show. Definitely a night full of action. But yes, Burnstorm. Real unfortunate for her, losing the title right at the end here. And Sofia cl cl claiming the championship spot. With an 8 point victory and the title. Let's see. 70. What does that mean? 71. And with the 10 points, that is 81. First storm, unfor yeah, un unfortunately for her, Sophia Allen so close to being the undisputed champion, but Burn Storm with 90 points is still uh, is ch still a challenging party. So yeah, Sophia Allen, junior fighting champion, just not the undisputed junior fighting champion. So 
my me just lost my fan. <laughs> my number one fan, no my no my paper fan. I just like to fiddle around with it. I'm pretty sure a, a good old fight is about to start off. Well, of course it's a good old fight, considering who we have entering the ring right uh, right now. Not on, only after Big Ham, but uh, after the people coming uh, the people coming after him as well. The following contest is a fatal four-way tables match. Making his way to the ring from the United States of America, weighing in at 416 pounds, Hammer, Big Ham Nelson. Yes, once again, Big Ham Hammer Nelson is the man who got this match with his Survivor Series victory bonus, allowing him to choose any match type, any opponent, any stipulation. He realized that he was not going to be getting, getting a, a shot at the championship, he was not going to become a season, season championship. So what he instead chose was a match that would allow as much many good friends, good characters taking part in the same same fight. And thus he has chosen one of the newest inventions of the Pro Masters, the uh, Fatal 4-Way Tables Elimination. Going up against... A very good ca cast of characters, all season one classic brawlers, all professional martial artists, and uh, all people who have definitely made their mark in the show. But, but, and yeah, that's already a fantastic. First, from the Wild West, weighing in at 256 pounds, the ladies' man, Outlaw Casey. Yeah, as I was about to say, what a fantastic way to give give a great exhibition on the highlights of season three. All of these people taking part in this match tonight have had a very impactful part I I I I along the season three storylines, and now it all culmin culminating tonight. All of them leading very, very great, very promising careers and. All of them gonna be continuing on with entertaining you, the audience, uh, when we get into season four. And looks like out like he cannot wait for this to start. And representing the crew from overseas. Weighing in at 210 pounds, the Captain Cooper! Now Captain Cooper here, a masterful technician and a bit of acrobatic talent to boot that up. Man who set out to, uh, to the third season of Pro Masters with the singular goal of creating his own Cooper screw. Uh, and while, while the fir first months were mostly a failure on that account, he has, however, found a first mate, Alexia Regadotir, not part of tonight's show, but nonetheless, no doubt about it, but watching back back home and gonna be ruling for her captain here. But I, I got confirmation from Captain Cooper that his search is not over, he's not gonna be stopping until he has a full crew. So you can expect that to happen uh, once we roll on to season 4. It's great that these brawlers are already promising, giving a, ta giving a taste of what's going to be happening uh, when the next season starts. Yeah, this is only a reminder that this is only a season finale, not the show finale. Season 4 is going to be starting as soon as possible, I can guarantee that. New brawlers, new, new championships, new storylines, all everything that you love about wrestling. And he's definitely a man who showcases exactly what wrestling, uh, like, uh, cu culminates everything that wrestling is all about. Fighting with honor, fighting with style, fighting with 
championships on his mind. So still one of the most influential professional martial arts champion here in the third season. His feud with Thunderstorm and Trey was one of the most legendary parts in the early season. And that definitely established him uh, as one of the greatest uh, members taking part in the show. Alright, the bell has rung and we're starting off this fatal four-way match. A very, some would say a very fun one, others would say a very sadistic one. It's gonna be a ta fatal four-way tables elimination, so the rules are, as per uh, a mix of elimination rules and tables rules, you're gonna be the last man standing in the ring, having uh, outlasted everyone else. Eliminations happen only by sending your opponent through a table. That That is the only stipulation. No disqualification, no countouts. No pinfalls, no submissions. A defi definitely a match that tests the ultimate medal of these people, and it's definitely one that the crowd loves, but no doubt about it, also these brawlers love. I, for one, would like like to take part in a match like this. And oh, I, let's be honest, I would be the first one to be sent through the table, no matter what the odds are. Classic season one characters, Coach Dio and Outlaw Casey is still inside the ring, but again it's one another. Then we have Captain Cooper and Big Ham, and looks like Coach Dio, the first person to get out, uh, set out and get the table, sending it inside the ring. Not setting it up, but at least it's there. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna be uh, giving any pointers to the brawlers here taking part in this fight, but. Uh, just for you, the audience, uh, just know that the announcement table is also a valid choice. Coach Leo diving in from the middle rope. A big hand with the shoulder claw against Captain Cooper. Fireball punts against Casey, who landed right onto the table and now being punched. Ooh, crossing the face against the table, and I think he hit the steel leg part of it too as well. That's That's not gonna be... Yeah, I think yeah, I think I see blood dripping down the mask there. Ooh, big hand being sent right onto the, uh, the ring post there. Ooh, and Casey delivering, delivering Coach Leo right onto the table, giving a bit of payback there. Casey setting up the table now. We could be seeing the first elimination here in a matter of moments. Coach Leo countering. Catching hold of Casey and setting him up against the table. This could be, ooh, counters. Quick thinking there from Casey with the elbow setting up DDT. Drops down Coach Leo. Big Ham sent across right next to our announcement table. And here we have the one night stand by Outlaw Casey. Big Ham being sent inside as well. Three brawlers now inside the ring. Casey sending Coach Leo against the table. Slines him up, and this could be it. Flapjack! Coach Leo, the first person get eliminated. Yeah, and it can only get only wilder from here. We can track it down all the ropes with him. Close line. Captain Cooper and uh, Outlaw Casey, previous tag team members, they, uh, be part of the Outlaws team. Very good friends, but once that bell rings, it's every man for himself. Ooh, beautiful kitchen sink, taking down Big Ham. And now Captain Cooper locking up the anchor hold. The submission hold, it does not matter. Ooh, look at the stretch he's bringing. Big Ham trying to... F yeah, you can tap out all you want, it doesn't matter. The match is gonna continue, you're not out of the harm's way just yet. And I believe he just wanted the opportunity to escape. Big Ham catching hold of the table and... Trying to get it inside the ring, there it goes. And looks like Coach Leo is take, take, take his sweet time getting out of the, the arena here. Meanwhile, we have Outlaw Casey bringing in yet another table inside the ring. The ring is going to be full of splinters. The crew will have to clean that up after this match has concluded. Don't want to have any, anything, any splinters for any of the fights coming up. Backbreaker there for Captain Cooper. Impressive that he's able to leave over 400 pounds of mass. 416 pounds, or as we 
as the rest of the world understands at 188 kilograms. Going for strikes now Captain Cooper has cornered both, both Casey and Big Ham. Cooper getting back inside the ring, gets in all of the table, but Casey wants to step ahead. And about to let Cooper dictate the pacing of the match here, headlock into a punch. He goes down, the man goes down, and now Casey with the table setting it, trying to set... No, he tosses it off. What is he doing? I think he had a plan there, but must have realized that Big Ham right next to him might not, might not be the good time. The, cla uh, the fight between these classic characters still going on. Casey sent in the corner. Stomp right into the midsection, lighting up. This could be Ali Oop. Unfortunately for Big Ham, the table was not in any situation where it could be broken like that. Otherwise a good tactic, although I see a crack on that one. Cooper now trapped uh, in, around the ropes and the table. And Big Ham, the only man standing in the ring. Casey and Cooper coming back too. I don't know. I don't know how these two are expecting to fight one another with the table in between them. Simming around, Cooper ducking out of the way, catching hold. There we go. Ha ha successfully had made. Oh, what is K uh, Cooper being sent outside? Should have sent him the other way around. That could definitely turn uh, turn ice against him. Big Cam catching hold of. Outlaw Casey trying to track him. No, let him go. No, trying to track him again. Cooper trying to get Casey, trying to gesture at Big Ham to get the, get Casey to him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Big Ham is doing here. He's just constantly looking up a headlock here. Casey finally getting getting uh, control of the situation on his side. Catching hold of Big Ham now. No, lets him go. What what are they doing? The, they are trying to set each other against the table, but. Uh, they, they, for some reason, they're, uh, they're spun out of control. Casey able to fight off the hold here. Going for strikes now, able to break out of the vicious cycle. Headlock into a punch. Picking up Big Ham. Ooh, Cooper trying to play dirty in there. Look at this. The Moonlight Drive and send in. Big Ham out of out of this fight, breaking the table on the aim back there. This is up to these two, the, the outlaws, the original outlaws, Casey and Captain Cooper, two friends with table about to uh, come into the middle of them. And there comes the table. Let's see which one of these will be taking advantage of it first. Ooh, powerful uh, slam there. Unfortunately, table did not break from that impact, but. That will definitely give. Ooh, here we go. The moonlight drive. By Outlaw Casey. Yeah, the table might not be broken by that impact, but the back, uh, the human body definitely could be. Casey picks up Captain Cooper, trying to set him up against the table, but Cooper not about to give him the pleasure. Kick to the mid section here. Going for strikes. Come, multiple ones. Ooh, what a stiff punch. These two both know that the end is looming. Cooper with the advantage. Casey lining up against the table, and here we go. Sidewalk slam. Captain Cooper with a steal from behind victory, having outlasted against three other professional martial artists. A reigning supreme in this table's match. What an excellent display of talent of raw sportsmanship and by the end only one winner uncontested well this will definitely uh, work as an excellent recruitment drive for the Cooper's crew Coming up next on the Pro Masters, we have the seventh match of the night. This is gonna be our triple threat Iron Woman contest. 
and it is for the women's professional martial arts championship title. That's right, the silver title on the line here. Ashley Woodward and Selena Bay. Uh, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, Ashley Woodward and Sarah Bailey, both of them challenging the champion, the current champion, Selena Bochamp. And there's there's a reason the reason why this will be an Iron Woman contest, but we'll get to that soon enough. First, let's get a quick look at the scoring situation. After that match, Coach Leo, the first one to get eliminated, making his final total score 85. Then we have Big Ham as the next person. They get him four points, and with that, his total is going to be 73. Out, out like AC. Very, very, very almost and uh, and uh, 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 reaching to the end. We had final score coming down to 88. And the man, the legend, the captain Cooper. Despite his victory, he's so far behind in the scoring. His final score for season three is gonna be 61. But here, here we have an opportunity. Here we have a very good opportunity. Celine, Selena Bochamp, the current the professional martial arts champion. Gonna, gonna be defending the title and should she may succeed that she is in a very good position of earning the season championship after all. She is currently ranking second, second brawler with a total of 112 points. The following contest is a triple threat match and is for the Women's Professional Martial Arts Championship. Introducing the challenger from the edge of reality, Ashley Woodward. The Tiefling Brawler coming here once again. A woman who has plenty of experience being a champion and one of the greatest rising stars here in the season three. This, this is uh, this is the moment. This is her time. Ashley Woodward, of course, coming up to this fight, co coming to this fight with a total of 95 points. So she would be ranking, uh, I believe, seventh overall. So, so close to the top six position. But a victory tonight could secure a very, very pleasant ranking. And if she's able to fight hard, she will see could potentially be, become a uh, still from behind victory season champion. And introducing the challenger, representing power and glory from Kingston, Jamaica, Sarah. Here comes a woman who has always promised to be with the greatest champion of them are all, Sarah Bailey. With one final opportunity to uh, go at the silver title. And to, uh, tonight definitely wanted she wanted to take part in no matter what. The, the champion was gracious enough to allow both of the challengers to take, take her uh, at this point. Let, let's see whether or not that will, that, will be, that will be to her advantage or whether or not she'll be falling behind just because of that. A very interesting stipulation here with a triple threat Iron Woman contest. And introducing the champion from Montreal, she is the women's professional martial arts champion, Selena Bochamp. Selena has been definitely turning he heads throughout the season three. 
and uh, not, not much of it is contributed to her winning the professional martial arts belt. Not one, not only once, but uh, as of tonight, twice. Last first day win winning it in an eight woman ladder, ma ladder match. And tonight defending it one more time. Currently ranking the second brawler in the entire series, 112 points. A victory tonight could ensure her the season championship. So this will be a match you definitely do not want to miss. And here it is, the silver belt of the Brawl Masters. A very hi highly contested one. Everyone has been going after this at one point or another. And it's been the center of attention for a long time, both in the men's and the women's division. 15 minutes on the clock, the bell has rung. And we're starting off this championship fight. Selena Bochamp ca calling the stipulation as the defending champion. Choosing to go for an Iron Woman contest just for the sole reason that she understands that just winning a match just winning and retaining the championship match would, would not be enough to ensure her a season championship t title. In uh, instead, she she needs to go. She needed to go for an uh, Iron Woman contest, where you are actually able to multiply your points based on the amount of falls you get, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of falls. And for this one, with a triple threat ruling, all the falls will be worth. Uh, I mean, not only a triple threat, but also a championship fight. All the falls will be worth three points each. Not only that, but the championship belt itself worth it, worth of 25 points. So in a very good position, in a very good position here to come in, come in and steal the first place from from the current placeholder, Thunderstorm Trey. Only 20 point cap here. So if if Selena is able to get, uh, well, let's see, tw 20. That would be if she's able to get seven falls here, seven pinfalls or seven submissions or any mixture of those, then she she would be claiming the number one position. Rolling out, out and Selena definitely has started heavy, heavy against both of the challengers, having completely dominated in this match so far. Well, Sarah Bailey no gets countered again. The champion still in full control. Remember the ultimate quest here, the question here is the time. Only 15 minutes on the clock, so that's a lot. You you basically need a pinfall every two minutes. If Selena is hoping to claim the season championship position. All eyes on her, but also it, we could be getting an upset here. Sarah Bailey and Ashley Woodward in a very good position. Maybe not necessarily for the season championship, but it, nonetheless in a position as uh, Ashley already going for the cover, the first cover of the fight, kick out at two. Sarah Bailey kicking out. Not enough damage has been done, but it's gonna be a long fight, so you're gonna re uh, uh, reserve your energies to the, uh, towards the end of it, because at towards the end, that's where all the falls gonna be happening. Missing with the drop kick, and the champion is back, catching hold of Sarah. Beautiful suplex toss. Yeah, we have a powerhouse versus a technician. The technician being the champion versus a striker, and the striker is being now set, set up as an example. A uh, triple suplex combo, the suplex city here. Beautiful float over neck breaker, reverse stunner, really, and now launching and spine buster. Just delivering a heavy impact to the champion. Cra close comes in. Chain link close line into the cover now. The champion's shoulders are down and kicks out. Still a little less than 12 minutes left of this championship fight here. This is a race against the clock, but also a race to survival. Kick to them. Oh, missing the kick and gets caught the second time. Tosses the champion off. Lifted up, the challenger now being carried around and tossing her face first onto the turnbuckles. Here comes Selena on Bulldog Leg Drop, or as he calls it, the famous sir. Hooks up the leg, and Ashley comes to break it up. Yeah, good strategy there from Ashley. You can also 
you not only gotta worry about your first opponent who are, you're gonna be pinning, but you also gotta make sure that you have the opportunity to go for the pin. Because obviously neither no one wants your, you getting getting any scores here. And if uh, succeeding in any falls. Sending outside of the ring now. The champion is out. And the challenger is being lifted up. Challenger is lifting up another challenger. Ashley Woodward setting herself onto the top rope. Lining up and measuring up Sarah. Here she comes, missing again with the drop kick. Sarah takes the opportunity and Selena gets the crowd on her side. You gotta be very tactical in a match like this. Of course, if this ends in a draw, then uh, by default the champion will be retaining. Sarah sending Ashley to the rope. No, she stops right before going over. A quick save there. Sarah lifting up. Beautiful exploder suplex into the cover now. No, gets broken up again. Yeah, it's absolutely full chaotic here. If no one is going to be getting any falls, then can anyone honestly claim to be the winner? But then again, it's all, all play, playing into the advantage of the champion. As long as she's able to retain the title, that's all that matters to her at the end of the day. Nine and a half minutes left of this Iron Woman contest. The situation is still a uh, break-even tie. Double knee face breaker there into the cover now. Selena could be getting the early, early start to this race. No, kick out at two. Sarah still in this fight. Ashley tried to recover on the apron. And Selena preparing the strike. Knee lift. And comes in Famouser again. Rolls up Sarah and goes for the cover. But Ashley, no, she's gesturing up. What is she? Sarah breaks up the pin. Herself getting the shoulder up. And Selena locks up. Into the cover against Ashley. We have one. We have, no, only a one count. Pretty impressive. Not even to allow a two count at this point. Ooh, beautiful sleeper slam. Going for a springboard drop kick misses. I mean, I'm pretty sure it connected. Ashley just did not get faced by it. Sarah trapping the arm of the champion. Nasty pull and now going up against Ashley. Well, Ashley going up against Sarah here. Setting her up against the rope. Kick to the midsection. Lines her up. What is she doing? Taking up momentum here. Knee lift to the... Uh, well, a knee to the, running knee to the face. Ashley now all alone with the champion. Locks her up. Beautiful fall, uh, falling uh, neck breaker. S falling sp uh, swinging neck breaker. The champion being picked up. No, once again another counter. Selena Bochamp. Ooh, gets countered. Beautiful... Uh, uh, Dragon suplex, yeah, that's what it was. I was gonna call it tiger suplex, but no, that was a dragon suplex. Ooh, kick to the midsection, shining wizard. The striking abilities of Ashley coming to play here. We have one, we have two, and we have a breakup. Seven and a half minutes, half, halfway through the match, still an anil situation for everyone. At this rate, the champion will be retaining exploder suplex again into the cover, and the champion breaks it up. No one is letting anyone get any falls here. Famouser again. Ba Sarah Bailey is down. Hooks up the leg. The champion could be getting a uh, lead here. We have one. We have two. And we have a no shoulder up right before a free count. Still preparing to strike again. We know Selena votes up. This is exactly her forte. Just rapid fire Famousers. Ashley comes in here and steals, tries to steal the pinfall from Selena. Not about to happen though. Solid kick there. It's absolutely interesting when you have a ruling like this, how how, how the power situation changes. I would have expected there to be there to be a lot of falls. Another famous sir. Selena just has that high energy, like her energy reserves are uh, unparalleled. And no shoulder up again. Yeah, she can just keep on rapid firing famous for as long as she wants to. 
The champion now being hooked up. Fisherman suplex doesn't keep the bridge going. Only six minutes left. The fight hasn't turned out how Selena wanted, but still in her advantage as long as she's able to walk home with the championship belt. I suppose that's all that matters. Beautiful suplex not done yet, keeping the headlock in control. Sarah Pelli P tossed around. Impressive strength here one more time into the suplex city. Hooking up the leg. No, lets her go. Hooks up the leg again. And Ashley comes to break it up. Beautiful step up in security. And Sarah picks up the champion. Club to the back. That chain link club by crushing the face. Little over five minutes left. Ten minutes have already passed. Well, almost have passed. And still the situation is even. Wastelock take down. Wastelock toss over actually. Missing the discus backhand. And now Upin pulls. A hair pull match slam. Champion picking up knee lift into the famous her again. Rolls her up, but Ashley comes in, breaks up the pin again. And yeah, we gotta wonder what the champion is feeling right now. Famous her again incoming. Both the challengers have been taken down. Ashley and uh, Selena has been just full on dominating this fight. Two count and no shoulder up again. Are you kidding me? Stomp right under the arm. Base. Ooh, beautiful recovery. German suplex failing, but... Sarah still able to keep up with the strikes. Missing the kick, though. Allowing the champion, Snapmare, into a uh, basement drop kick. Ashley Woodward now catching hold of the champion. No, she, she gets hold. Or loses the hold. Four minutes left. Hooking up. Lift off into a suplex, no. Ashley able to escape, goes for the German herself. She has her, to, she has the champion right where she wants her. She just needs to, to deliver Northern Lights. Thump right onto the face. Setting up, takes a momentum here. Beautiful, beautiful kick to the back of the head. There hooks her up. Three, three and a half minutes left. Once again, Sarah Bailey com coming to break up, but this time, no, who's gonna be saving Sarah? Rolling the twa, da, rolling the dice. Selena getting back up, she better hurry up, or this is gonna be a waste. Oh, just in the nick of time, breaking the pinfall. Ooh, beautiful roll of, ooh, backbreaker. Yeah, that was right there. I, I, if Ashley would have succeeded. I have no doubt in my mind she would be walking home with the title. Ooh, knee lift to the face. Backbreaker. The champion rolling to safety. And with that, Sarah Bailey now with the opportunity. Sliding knee tackle to the back. And eyeing at her fellow challenger. Lifting up, exploder suplex again into the cover. This could be it, this could be the offset we've been waiting for. Two and three. Sarah Bailey gets the first fall of the match. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. Unless Selena is able to tie this off. She will be losing the title. And look at this armbar now from the challenger. Pulling on it as much as she's able to. Uh, no, she lets her go. Here comes the champion now. Setting up. No, gets countered. Kick to the mid -side. Ooh, missing. Selena locks up. A running bulldog face first into the canvas. Picks up the challenger again. The leader of the situation. Ooh, Neely, but loses, uh, the, losing, losing the momentum and allowing Sarah to recover. Triple threat now going. Ooh, headbutt there from Ashley. Wastelock take down from Sarah. The champion is down. And Neely to the face. Sarah in, uh, currently in control. All she needs to do is hold right now. Rapid fire punches to the midsection. Sending Ashley in the corner. Twisting on the arm. Ooh, chop right across the shoulder. Not done yet. Gonna be doing it again. One minute and... A little, a little over one minute left here. This is, this is the crutch time. 
Selena trying to track Sarah, making successfully tracking her into the corner. Drop kick against Ashley. She needs to close the deal right here, or she's losing the title. Chop right across the chest. Ooh, but a kick to the face, allowing Sarah to get up, missing the kick. The champion, the still retaining. There goes Famouser again. 50 seconds, hooks up the leg. We have one, we have a two count, and we have a three. Tying up the situation. Once again, setting up. Ooh, double knees, face breaker. Uh, if she's able to hold this for just 30 seconds longer, she will be... She will be retaining. Here goes another famous sir. Rolls up Sarah, 20 seconds on the clock. But Ashley comes to break it up. I don't see why. Why even butter at this point? Oh, getting a famous sir herself into the cover. She was not expecting that. Uh, Selena could be winning this uncontested. Two count and three. Selena secures the victory and with only a few seconds one as she does it having defeated both of the challengers at the same time still retaining and with that we have undisputed women's professional martial arts champion Selena Bochamp give me just a quick second to tally up the points here here is your winner and still women Professional Martial Arts Champion, Selena Bochamp! An absolutely a fantastic fight here. And a fantastic conclusion to it as well. We will move on for now, but I'll get, to, uh, back, uh, get back on the points as soon as possible. In a few seconds, as soon as I'm done announcing this. Next up, we're gonna be having another professional martial arts exhibition match. A two-on-two -two tornado tag team match. Brutus the Barbarian and Wolf Anderson teaming up against Flyboy and Tornado Torres. Or as we also know them, the Hero Alliance. But because the previous one was a championship fight, we need to exit it and get back to it. All right, so let's see. With only one fall for Sel uh, for Selena, but able to win the win the match, though she will, she will get a six point. One one eight for for now, and then adding the twenty five points. Her final total comes down to. Yeah, right now she is the first. With that, Selena Bochamp gets the first place for now. Uh, why, why did the... Yeah. Yeah, the undisputed women's professional martial arts champion. And currently number one brawler overall. Of course, Thunderstorm Andre still has his match coming up. If he's able to retain, that will uh, set him to the top instead. But for now, Selena is ta ta has taken the lead in this situation. She cannot earn any more points. That's her final. As for Sarah Bailey, who got one fall from the match, her final point comes down to uh, her her final score comes down to 88. And then we have Ashley Woodward, who uh, uh, did not manage to make any falls during, during that last match. Her final comes down to 90, uh, 97.
The following contest is a Tornado Tag Team Match. Introducing first, from Parts Unknown, weighing in at 244 pounds, Brutus the Barbarian. Brutus, of course. More than adamant enough that he gets a, 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 a fight here in Pro Mania. Uh, I honestly did not w w want to upset him, so yeah, I said, sure, you can be part of a tag team if, if you can uh, accept your tag team partner. And these two, his tag team partner, definitely someone he has a previous history with, not, not as rivals, but who have uh, been part of the same tag team previously. I suppose you could. Uh, the original inception of the War Raiders. Brutus the Barbarian, Wolf Anderson, and Carly Harl. Of course, Carl not being part of the Silver Division, he's not taking part in this fight, but Wolf Anderson definitely is. And his partner. Representing the Viking Raiders from Valhalla, weighing in at 177 pounds, Wolf Anderson. Absolutely a fierce warrior and someone who's always in the fight. Someone who always go, go, goes and does what he does best, and that is fight. No matter what kind of our opponent is up against him. He's doing his best to make sure that he stays on top. Big matchup opportunity here, once again in the tag team division. But Wolf is gonna be fighting for him for himself. high-flying superhero tag team that has wowed the crowd and been protecting us from evildoers all around. Here are Flyboy and Tornado Torres. Uh, let's get to say, I'm glad to see them be part of Raw Mania here. It would have been a uh, good, good show without, without their uh, good, good guy attitude and their head banging. This is what it's all about. Romania welcomes you. A team without its, uh, not without its drama. They, these two have had their share of woes, but ultimately overcoming it and reali realizing that they're they, uh, it's up, realizing about each other that they are the best partner they could be ever asking for. Go the Bella Swang and this tornado tag team match is on. All about one fall, one pinfall or one submission. Ooh, a beautiful springboard mo uh, moonsault there. Tor uh, Wolf Anderson already going going for a submission hold, but Tornado Torres is, is to break it up. Brutus the Barbarian now uh, crossing the skull of Flyboy, tosses him down. Really sure he, he, he attacked the antennas there as antennae as well. Oh, pulling on the le oh, shoulder now. The flyboy, beautiful standing shooting star. Yes, Brutus, another one, but this time getting the knees. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a good display of tag, tag teaming action as well as a professional martial arts uh, action in the men's division. Right after this, right after this match, we will have the men's professional martial arts championship. Philip Foster versus Thunderstorm Andre. Once more, Philip trying to get the belt, and once more, Thunderstorm Andre trying to retain the title. This is the make or, or, or rather, that will be the make or break moment. That will 
most likely you ultimately decide whether or not Thunderstorm Andre even has an opportunity to try and claim the season championship. Currently falling behind of the number one brawler Selena Bochamp, who finished up tallying with a total of 143 points. It all honestly it all comes down to whether or not uh, Thunderstorm Andre is able to retain the championship belt. If he loses the belt, he he loses all hope. That's that's why hopefully he picked, he has picked a match stipulation that will allow uh, that will favor him. Meanwhile, torture rack position against Flyboy Brutus the Barbarian, trying to get a submission going, but Tornado Tor is breaking it up. Tornado Tor is catching all of Wolf, lifting him up. Going around and tossing around the king, uh, the swing, giant swing, elbow to the face, gets countered and sent into the corner and Wolf picking the leg, kicking it right beneath. And now washing the face with the boot, taking a bit of speed here. And one more face wash. We have a flyboy going up against Brutus and doing really well against Brutus. I, I, I'm surprised to see Brutus. Brutus the Barbarian in this kind of situation, as is in a situation where he's falling short, especially against someone like Flyboy. Two count, kick out. So close to a conclusion right there, but not quite enough. Not quite quite yet. Enough for a conclusion. Sent over the top rope. A Flyboy joining on the ringside, mini Tornado Torres and Flo Wolf Anderson currently the only people who can bring this match to a conclusion. It looks like Flyboy setting up. A Cobra Clutch submission hold, very ve good idea to strain your opponent, keep them locked up. But Wolf Anderson with the Northwell lights are not done yet. Goes for the ne swinging neck breaker as well, hooks up the leg and goes for the victory here. This could end it right here, kick out at two. Flyboy not paying any attention to what's going on the ring, instead set on eliminating Brutus the Barbarian out of the competition. And that's definitely a good idea, but that will endanger your tag team partner unless there's trust, absolute trust that they can get the job done but considering how Wolf Anderson has been dominating against him pulling up, locks up a chokehold here, the shoulder and the legs all working together here in a triangle, triangle choke, Flyboy breaks it up that's in hold and now being sent across spear there from Wolf Takes down with animalistic uh, fury. Flyboy breaks up the pin and oh, the referee getting a sharp shot there. Wastelock takedown. Wolf coming in to save Brutus from the corner and slaps the head of Flyboy. No doubt about it, giving a piece of his mind for interrupting the pinfall there. Flyboy able to turn things around. Shooting star, another one. Rapid fire shooting stars, standing shooting stars that is. Springboard, Moonsault as well, the High Flyer definitely living up to his name. We have one, we have two, and oh, right before a freak out of shoulder up. Getting up and getting up to the top rope, this good, oh, what is, what is Tornado, what are Tornado Torres and Brutus doing on the ringside? Well, never mind, Shooting Star from the top, kick out at two. Wolf Anderson still holding on, but you can see the light waning in his eyes. Comes in knees. Knees meeting the shooting star. There's no no way out of that one. Uh, hello there, Smoka. Glad you could join the Brawl Mania. We're already halfway through the show tonight. Uh, this is a live, this is a live streaming event. Indeed. We are already halfway through, through the show and the situation has developed very, very interestingly. Selena Bochamp currently in lead of the season championship and currently the undisputed professional martial arts champion. Look at this power, power slam by Brutus. Yes, we have an exhibition match going on right now, but after this one we're going to be getting another championship fight. Thunderstorm Andre and Philip Foster. And no doubt about it, it's going to be the most... Highly anticipated the match, the, at least the match that I look most most forward to, considering how, for, how for how long Thunderstorm Andre has been going on. Tornado Torres hooking up the leg of Brutus two and three. No, right before a freakout. 
I like the ring colors. Yeah, Martha Baker, the Elimination Chamber winner, being, being part of the main event. She and Blue Brood being the main eventers, and they'll, they'll be going up against the season champion and the partner of their choice. But Martha Baker, as the hostess of tonight, has chosen the ring colors. And there we go, Wolf Anderson sneaking away the victory with a spear. You know, I heard someone saying, I heard someone saying that Spear is quite a lackluster finisher, but Wolf Anderson here definitely showcasing that you cannot, you can never discount the Spear. It's a heavy attack, shoulder block right onto your soft side, and your whole body is launched with that. Anyone who misunder uh, 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 underestimates the Spear is definitely not understanding what's going on. As promised, we're gonna be getting the men's professional martial arts fight uh, next. This is gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one, two out of three falls match. Philip Foster for the final time in season three, challenging for the title, and Thunderstorm Andre as the defending champion. This is where history is made. Yes, this will pretty much determine the rest of the night. Will Thunderstorm Andre retain the title? If he's able to, he will be getting back to that number one position. If Philip Foster will finally get the title for the first time, uh, earning himself a title, that means Thunderstorm Andre will be falling out of the competition and Selena Bochamp will have a secured number one position up until the Grand Prix fights. Very intense, very intense situation going on right here. You do not want to miss this. Meanwhile, uh, uh, after the last match, Wolf Anderson's final tally comes to 63 points. Brutus the Barbarian over there, we, uh, gonna be 60 points. Tornado Torres, his final total is gonna be 57. And Flyboy is gonna be 56. Are we getting Aunt Teresa tonight? Aunt Teresa has already fought. She fought in the fourth match of the night. She was part of the Triple Threat Exhibition match against Bert the Valkyrie and Wang Ling. It was a very awesome fight. I'm sorry that you missed it, but you can watch it as soon as the stream is over and uh, rewind. Well, actually, you could rewind back to it right now, but uh, honestly, I would say it's better, better to w wait until the stream is finished. And, uh, Aunt Teresa unfortunately did, uh, did uh, fall short tonight, Wang Ling able to secure the victory of that triple threat fight, but it was a very hard fought one. The following contest is a two out of three falls match and is for the Men's Professional Martial Arts Championship. And here we go, a man who has been aiming for the championships ever since joining in this series, Philip Foster. Failure is uh, the second season to claim a uh, championship title, cost him basically his entire fortune, but that hasn't stopped him. He has still kept on with his own drive, trying to get into, get, get into a championship title match wherever possible. And tonight, for the last time possible in season three, this is the moment. G gotta hand it to it. Philly Foster. He does not know when to get or uh, quit or uh, actually that's a bit mean meanfully said. I uh, what I meant that he, he he has that never give up spirit spirit attitude. O always willing to challenge the champion no matter who they are. Oh, wait a minute. We have some additional people joining on our, with Thunderstorm and Trey right now. The faces of fear here as well. Accompanying the professional martial arts champion. Just what is this about? Uh, 
Well, here comes the professional martial arts champion of the men's division, Thunderstorm Andre. A man who for the longest time was training as the number one brawler. Only tonight has he fallen behind against Selena Bochamp, who has now cast in her title points. This match will be deter determining Andre's final situation, the final scoring, and the potentially whether or not he'll be worthy enough to claim the season championship. But with the faces of fear here, I, I just gotta wonder just what kind of a thing is going on here. Why are Dr. Edwards and Eraser here? Introducing the challenger from London, England, weighing in at 215 pounds. Mr. Philip Foster! And introducing the champion from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 238 pounds. He is the men's professional martial arts champion, Thunder Storm Andre! The title that has been the most contested one in the entire fr uh, season three. You would not have been. A, who would have guessed that it would be the silver title that would be the uh, center of the attention? But here it is. It's thanks to Thunderstorm Andre and other champions like him that have made this belt so relevant. And tonight, for the final time, it is on the line. Tonight, we will know whether or not Andre will be worthy of it. Will will he be the undisputed professional martial arts champion, or will Philip Buster finally defeat the champion and finally get the championship belt? Sordo, shoulder class Mr. Holt already locked in. Yeah, two out of three false match, so. It, 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 yeah, it's just that they said you need to get two false, either two pin false, two submissions, or one of these, or get the other person disqualified twice, or any mixture of those. Yeah, so Andre definitely trying to play it safe. Nothing fancy, no fancy gimmicks. He already knows that he can defeat Philip Foster, but he's also. Taking an extra step to secure his position as the number one brawler. Whether or not he, he is able to do that remains to be seen. And count outs are illegal, so. But this could definitely come into work, work, play for Andre. He's climbing to the top, diving in, knee drop, and Philip Foster getting a face full of knee. Also, like like to take a, a bit of a moment here to talk about Dr. Edwards currently joining ringside. With his tag team partner Eraser and uh, uh, supporting for some reason, well, I don't know if they're supporting, but at least he's inspecting Thunderstorm Andre, keeping a close eye on him. Dr. Edwards, the junior fi fighter at the Royal Rumble winner, he meaning he's going to be going later on tonight against Cutie by Cook, fighting for the Grand Prix Championship. We have a five count, and both of them are back inside. A sidewalk slam. Delivered by the champion. Yeah, if he's gonna keep, keep keeping up with this pace, there's no doubt about it that the champion will retain and with that secure his position as the number one brawler. There are still few wild cards out there. Ooh, a small package there from the challenger, though. Yeah, Philip has co come into this fight many times. He has fought with Thunderstorm Andre multiple times already for this title. He knows, at this point, you would assume that he knows. Uh, exactly what Andre is made out of. He knows his tactics, he knows his strengths and weaknesses. He knows how to take the man down. Question is, uh, uh, which one of them is more prepared? Which one of them has done their homework tonight? I don't think Andre has been too focused with studying up Philip Foster, considering last Thursday we saw the man attacking... Oh, now it, ma it all makes sense. Thunderstorm Andre about to light up the lightning fist. Here it comes. No, gets countered. Yeah, this is Philip Foster definitely has done his homework. But yeah, now it all makes sense. Thunderstorm Andre attacking Cutie Pie last Thursday. And Cutie Pie tonight fighting against Dr. Edwards. That's, that explains a lot. It doesn't answer all the questions, but it definitely gives a bit of insight on what's going on. But yeah, that kind of a not being able to. I don't know. Andre seems a bit of an egotistical one that he would not be studying up his opponents. Instead, he relies on his own abilities. 
Lifting up. And here comes the blue thunder bomb. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. Two and no. Rep for a free count. Escaping the pinfall. Philip Buster still, in, well, he would be still in this fight, but still zero to zero situation. Diving in with the elbow and Philip getting out of the way. Crossing. Ooh, hair pull, mat slam, stomp on the arm. And here we go. The classic, the ever beloved British longbow hold. Philip Foster special delivered. And oh, look at the hair. Looks like uh, some kind of a spider monster right there. With Andre's hair. Wrenching the arm, takedown. Setting up, wrenching it again. Really just punishing it, trying to ensure that that lightning fist does not connect. Philip cover, uh, covering now only a one count. Impressive, very impressive endurance from the champion. Do not even allow a two count at this point. But it's gonna be a long match. Uh, two, two out of three false mats. It could end up in a very favorable or unfavorable. You cannot rely on just one fall. You have to also ensure that you, you are still out there to make the other fall come true. Philip catching hold of the head. No, gets taken down. Sweeping the leg. The champion is able to turn things around. Picking up. Going for a strike and now setting up. Beautiful back suplex drop. And looks like the back of the head hit the, hit the canvas first. Ooh, basement drop kick to the knee. Philip Foster sti still in this control. Definitely a good match. It's been because of matches like this that their professional martial arts title has been the highlight of the season three. Men like Philip Foster coming back for it. Men like Thunderstorm and Trey defending it. It's been absolutely a wild ride. Catching hold and setting up. Another back suplex. Oh no, tosses him off just. And the faces of fear definitely cheering for Andre. For, for their own purposes. I, I don't know what, what, what their deal is here. I mean, it's clear that some kind of a deal has been made here. Uh, uh, that, it, that would definitely explain how Andre was able to get... There goes the lightning fist. That would definitely explain... How Thunderstorm and Ray was able to get the professional martial arts title back from E Razor if there the, if there was some double dealing going on, going on in the background, but nonetheless, it all comes down to talent. Here we go one more time with the blue thunder bomb into the cover. Now we have one, we have a two count, and we have a three. There goes the first fall. Thunderstorm and Ray taking the leap, but. It still comes down to, he still needs to secure one more fall to secure the victory here, secure the belt, and secure his position as the undisputed professional martial arts champion. Who got the leg, goes for the dragon screw. Stomp right on it, Philip Foster back up. Ooh, look at this, sunset flip, power bomb. Really nimble, really nimble technical mastery there from Philip. Being picked up, setting up. Looking up, the gentleman's clutch into the cover now. We have one, we have a two, and we have a... No, so breaking up the pin right before a free count. A moment of excited, it's palpable. I'm, 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 well, this is definitely the fight of the champions here. Rapid fire kicks as Andre is able to sidestep out of the way. Being caught now and sent into the corner. This could mean a very poor uh, thing for the uh, defending champion being lined up. And here comes the Tower of London crashing down. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. We have one, we have a two count and we have a three. Philip Foster evening out the score. The excitement is even m that much more intense right now. The gentleman's clutch, this could be it. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, what an upset. What an absolute upset. Philip Foster. Able to come in. Able to at long last defeat Thunderstorm and Trey. And take the title away. This will definitely shake things up. With the scoring situation. We will we'll need to need a moment to tally up the points here, but here nonetheless. And new men's professional martial arts champion, Mr. Philip Foster. 
Oh, and you can see he is already clinging on to it. He does not want to let it go. And you can blame him. He's been fighting all, all two seasons for a belt. And the, this entire season for this specific belt. And at long last he has it. At the final, right at the final, able to come in here and take the championship belt. But what an upset it feels to the overall to the season championship division. I will get back to you on on that situation, see where Andre will end up. But we, before that, we will move on with the show and get prepared to set go for the next match. With that, the Professional Martial Arts Division is done for now. We are moving on to the Grand Prix series of the Pro Masters, the toughest of the men and the women going to be fighting out. And next up, we have an eight-man battle royale match featuring eight of the men all-star brawlers. Waterman, Jackie Jackson, Andreas and Mark Hunter, Henry Louis Marceau, Marshall David, Jake In Young, and of course, Putzer Pedro. But before that, we need to exit exit the show and get back to it. Thanks, 2K. What an absolute upset that fight was. T -t taking the championship belt right underneath Thunderstorm and Trey. He was able to get one pin foe. So with that, Thunderstorm and Trey gets... His final score is gonna be 136. That's right, 136. Thunderstorm Andre currently ranking number two. Did I say 30? Yeah. No, that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. It should be 138. Yeah, there we go, that's the right one. So with this, Selena Bochamp with 143 is leading the situation. It all comes down to the Grand Prix Championship titles. Those are gonna be the final determining factor on who's gonna be the season champion. And then we have Philip Buster. Let's see here. Quick tally here. His final score is gonna come to a whopping 119. Pretty big and definitely the runner-up in the scoring of the Professional Martial Arts Division. But not quite enough to secure him the undisputed championship title. Had Thunderstorm Andre able, been able to retain, he would be the undisputed champion, but alas did not happen. It all rests now in the 12th and the 13th matches. Rachel Curtis versus Kathy Gardner, Dr. Edwards versus Cutie by Cook, and both of them Royal Rumble winners. So it's their stipulation instead of the champions. It's gonna be a very interesting to see what will happen. Will Dr. Edwards, well, Rachel Curtis is. I can already guarantee you that Rachel Curtis is not gonna be. Becoming a season champion. But what she is still able to do here is take take the belt away from Kathy Gardner. And that would be the, de the dealing blow that would do her in. But we'll get onto that soon enough. First, the eight man battle royale. Of course, 
this is the time. This is definitely the time to be celebrating all the uh, all star brawlers who have been taking part in the season three altogether. This exhibition match is gonna be one for the ages as we have the eight, eight toughest men, excluding the champion, taking, taking part in this fight. And exclude, excluding Blue Brood, of course, is gonna be later fighting on in the in the main event of tonight, teaming up with Martha Baker. And representing the Queens from the Queen City, weighing in at 274 pounds, Jackie. Jackson! The original Queen Jackie Jackson. His tag team partner Cuny by Cook going, going to be fighting soon enough in the Grand Prix Championship fight. Hopefully he'll be able to inspire his partner tonight. Especially in a fight like this. Excellent powerhouse and a man who knows what it means to be stylish. Most importantly, a man who does not care what the others think. He's being true to himself, and that already is worthy of respect. One half of the season two tag team champion, Andrea Sandra, a very prolific high flyer, who have been taking part in this most excitable Grand Prix uh, All Star All Star Battle Royale match. It's definitely going to have to be quick and nimble in this one, or else he's going to be falling behind all underneath all these powerhouses and uh, just overall ma massive brawlers. But that's exactly how he has managed to claim to the top one-time Grand Prix champion. And multiple times succeeding in defending the title. Many people have been champion, but only a few have actually succeeded in defending their title. And from Finland, weighing in at 213 pounds, Mark. Hunter. Mark Hunter, ranking number fourth currently, and with that, it's pretty safe to say that he's not going to be closing the gap with uh, the number one ranking brawler currently, Selena Bochamp. This match will, will not provide enough points to make that dream a possibility, but non nonetheless, making it to the top five in the series by the, by the end of season three. Once again, Mark Hunter proving himself not to be cut loose. Instead, he's a t stable name. A man, a, a phenomenal high flyer. Not, ma not maybe the number one brawler, but definitely one of the most revel rev relevant ones. Speaking of revel revelancy, why, why do I have trouble saying that word specifically? Nonetheless, and the Disco Warrior, France, weighing in at 206 pounds, Henry Louis Marceau. You know, there's a funny thing about Henry Louis Marceau. I cannot imagine, like, there's, there's this funny imagine I, uh, uh, image I have in my mind. Like, what if he was. Having a lizard tail and had a purple skin, maybe a green tongue, maybe a chain smoker, a gigolo. I don't know, but I, I just find that my, my, my scent uh, very amusing. Yes, relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Smoker, for uh, teaching the ways of the English.
it is the excitement, you know, excitement when you start uh, lose, losing your tongue and it twists all around. That's because these fights are just on a whole another level. You're welcome, thank you, thank you. And from Authority Megacorp headquarters, weighing in at 194 pounds, Marshall David. When is the new season coming, though? Yeah, well, uh, there's gonna be at least one week break uh, after this, so there are, there are few things I need to get ready, but it, it will be as soon, as soon as possible, actually. If looking, looking at the calendar, I would say that the show would premiere 11th of April. I, I mean, 11th of May, of course. 11th of May. And yes, I'm still accepting new con uh, co uh, co competitors. There are still, uh, 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 actually, there. Uh, this time around, there will not be a limit of 35 people per rust uh, per division. So yes, uh, still new people are welcome. If you have new people, or if anyone else in the audience have more people they want to get involved in the Brawl Masters, then let me know in the comments or reach out to me. However, you can. The Korean Idol and the King of the Extreme, representing Rhythm and Blues here. Just like Henry Louis Marceau is, I didn't even realize, somehow it did not realize, click to my head that the tag team members would be part, well, the resurrected tag team members would be part of the fight tonight. Nonetheless, taking, taking, definitely gonna be fighting him for himself tonight. Why does he look like Prince from Shrek? Of that, I have no idea. I, I, I do not know which Prince you're... Uh, are you talking about Prince Charming? Uh, in that case, all I can say is that he is indeed very charming, but... That's all part of being a K-pop idol. And one more people joining up for this eight-man battle royale match. And their opponent, representing the powers of pain, from Naples, Italy, weighing in at 243 pounds, Butcher Pedro. Yes, the devastating Butcher also going to be taking part in this fight. It's been so far a very good night for the powers of pain. After all, Philip Foster giving the ultimate humiliation to Thunderstorm Andre. I w w would you imagine if Butcher Pedro comes in here and w wins this whole damn thing tonight as well? Double victory for the powers of pain. Here we go, the ring is full of people, the bell has rung, and the Bell Royale match is on. This is, this is gonna be an elimination match. The eliminations happen, of course, by sending your opponent over the top rope with both of, both of their feet landing on the ground. This will continue until only one brawler is left inside the ring, who will be declared the winner of this Royal Rumble match. And there are so many, so much action. There we have Motorman Gradini T against Jake and Young. Yeah, you, you pick your favorite. Honestly, this is just a case of pick your favorite because the uh, the going is gonna be so wild. Ooh, Jakey with a beautiful recovery there against Motorman with a DDD of his own, and another DDD. Marshall David trying to get Andrea Santer, but he's able to fight out of it. Head scissors take down. Ooh, but able to roll through it. Marshall David uh, showing a bit of an acrobatic side of him, or thinking on his feet. Oh, but set up against the ropes here. Andreas, no momentum here. Rolls off into a beautiful back heel spin kick. 
Oh, and Henry being launched there by Mark, just crashing against the rogues. Beautiful leg drop there right on the, onto the collarbone. Heavy impact delivered. In a match like this, in an elimination situation like this, you definitely wanna, wanna waste no time around. Do, do not exhaust yourself attacking a single opponent. Instead, try to set up as many eliminations as possible, and if possible, try to team up against someone. Try to throw as many people outside of the ring as po quickly as possible, while also conserving your strength. The less people there are in the ring, the more intense you have to start fighting. Military pressed into a gut buster. Butcher Pedro showing how it's done to the Frenchman. Jackie Jackson cornering Mark again. No, let's he lets him stand up. Setting up. Ooh, beautiful drop kick to the face. Meanwhile, taking Young going up against Andreas. Borderman in the corner now in a poor position. And Marshall David being carried over. There goes Butcher Pedro with the close line. And Marshall David has been... Sent outside of the ring. There goes Mark over the top rope. Now Jackie only needs to push him over. There goes taking as well as Andreas is pushing. Mark makes his way back inside, but taking doesn't. Taking Young eliminated out of this competition. And now Andreas takes out his brother. Mark has been taken out with a poison Rana. Lifting up and Wastelock take down. Or waistlock, uh, waistlock uh, suplex toss. Super kick to the face there. Butcher Pedro taking control against Andreas. Another kick to the face. Motorman setting up Mark for an elimination, potentially lifting him up. This is no struggle whatsoever. Mark trying to desperately grasp onto the middle rope. Sent over, now he needs to be kicked off. Motorman with supreme amount of strength here. No, Mark able to counter him, attacking the leg. And forcing, off, forcing the elimination off. Beautiful slam there. Meanwhile, Henry going up against Jackie. And very impressive gutbuster there. The fact that he was able to lift Jackie up like that. It's nothing short of impressive. Ooh, dangling just by the nick of it. There goes the original queen. Jackie Jackson has been eliminated. Still five people remain and... Yeah, we're getting really quick eliminations out of this one. You know, you know, originally, originally it was planned that this would be Tony Halme Memorial Battle Royale, but uh, since Tony Halme has no nothing to do with Brawl Masters, but we can still call this Tony Halme Memorial. Uh, th this was made in, in honor, in in the loving memory of Tony Halme, one of the few, well, actually the only Finnish WWE superstar. The Viking. Uh, I just decided not to advertise it as such. Andreas Hunter about to eliminate Motorman. Head scissors locked in into a Hurricane Rana. Motorman beautifully taken out. Half of the people already out of the ring. Andreas once again against Mark with the poison Rana. Man, Mark has been having a bad luck, uh, bad, uh, poor luck against his brother tonight. Two times getting hit with poison ranas. Henry coming in to strike Mark. No, uh, switch over. Mark with a kick. Ooh, getting an elbow to the face. With Andreas lining up. A beautiful standing moonsault against Butcher Pedro. Being picked up here. Ooh, what a cr uh, fa uh, elbow to the face. And there's another elbow to the face. Atomic drop into the body splash. Butcher Pedro meanwhile setting up. Beautiful swinging neck breaker. Please teach me how to talk that fluent and fast in English. Uh, maybe one day. You know, I, I actually I, I, I was was about to was uh, to give you a suggestion that uh, that you you would join me as a color commentator here. But I, I decided not to not to bother you with that. But if you're interested, we could definitely set up another pay-per-view event for you, you to come in as a quest commentator. If you're interested. Setting up. Mark Hunter now. Beautiful suplex. Takes down the powerhouse. And the only man standing now. Well, Henry getting back up to his feet. 
Ooh, what a beautiful muscle drop kick. And now Butcher Pedro set up perfectly for our elimination. Mark lifting him up, grasping the middle rope and the top rope, but power overwhelming sent over the top. Now just needs to kick him out. A nice tackle would do it. Testing, turning, no. Attacking the leg, attacking the kneecap there, allowing the Butcher to get back inside. Well, he's taken down. We will Henry Louis Marceau against Andrea Santos. Solid DDT. Nothing fancy about that. And now looks like a pair has been switched. Ooh, neck breaker. Ooh, low blow for Mark. I mean, quick thinking, but low blow. Planned in the face against the canvas. I know you had to comment. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. That that would be the thing. Ooh, there goes Henry. Henry Louis Marceau eliminated, meaning it's gonna be either Butcher Pedro, Mark Hunter, or Andreas Hunter. And Mark Hunter taking out his brother with a sit out jaw breaker. Atomic drop now goes for the crossbody. And Mark definitely dominating in the ring right now. About time too, he's been uh, being the underdog for far too long. On the top row, miss a no, neck breaker. Well, he was able to get the shoulder against the body, but not, not fully locking the neck breaker. Picking up beautiful Moussal drop kick, setting Pedro perfectly in the corner and trying to lift him up. Up onto the top ropes here, only need to toss him off, and that's it. There he goes, lines up a catapult and tosses him off. A competitor has been eliminated. With that, it's either one of these Hunter brothers. Electric chair from Mark. Andreas or Mark Hunter, one of them will be uh, uh, getting the victory here tonight in this now established Tony Halme Memorial. Uh, 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 I completely forgot the match type. Uh, Battle Royale. Tony Halme Memorial Battle Royale, that's what it is. Coming in with the neck breaker. I don't know what's wrong with Mark. He's not able to hit those looking the head perfectly, but nonetheless, still able to deliver the. Ooh, catching the legs there. Andreas. Taking the advantage here, he knew what he was, his brother was going to be doing. And that might just have cost him the match. Sent into the corner, ooh, rebound. Mark still has a bit of time here, a bit of an advantage here. But for how much longer, Snapmare setting up. Beautiful basement drop kick. Anyway, yeah, who'd have, who would have imagined that Season 2 Tag Team Champions would be here at the Season 3 Finale, fighting against one another. Andreas lining up, Mark, there he goes! Mark has been eliminated with that. Andrea Hunter gets the victory, gets a massive victory here, outlasting all the other All Star Brawlers here. Absolutely wild. Here is your winner, Andres Hunter. And what a poetic victory! For a fiend like Andrea Hunter to secure a victory, celebrating the one Finnish WWE superstar. This is what it's all about. Next one is definitely gonna be an interesting the 11th match of the night. A no holds barred, no disqualification match. Black Rose Julia calling in her match of choice that she won by being part of the winning team at the Survivor Series. Choosing to go up against, of course, Magic Maggie. This is gonna be one hell of a showdown. Alright, I'm pretty sure everyone is interested on what ha what happens now what game what game what, what is the situation now with the battle royale and how that affects the points well let me tell you from from the first person to get eliminated da marshall david final points gonna be 79 next we are taking young his score is gonna be 81 there it goes 81 and jackie jackson his final score for the season 3 is going to be 84. Motorman uh, dropping at the halfway point. 
There he is. His final score, 89. Pretty good, pretty good. Then we had Henry Louis Marceau dropping out of the fight. He's gonna be 93. Very impressive. Okay, getting closer and closer to the lead here, but so far away. Kutzer Pedro. Uh, his score is not as impressive, unfortunately, but it, it, it's the name of the game. Uh, 73. And then we have the Hunter Brothers, Mark Hunter, the runner-up. Let's, let me quickly count. 113. So where does that put him? Wouldn't that put him on the third place? Yes. Of course, Cappy Gardner is gonna be up, up taking him as soon as her match is done, but for now, Mark can, he gets to enjoy the third place. And finally, Ma uh, uh, Andreas Hunter, the winner of the Battle Royale. His final score is 90, a clean 90. Anyway, moving on to the yet another very highly anticipated match. And who can play the Ma uh, Black Rose Julia Magic Maggie? This is where Pro Master started. The following contest is a no holds barred match. Making her way to the ring from Accra, Ghana, Black Rose Julia. And the final exhibition match of the night. This is the final. Well, yeah, this is the final exhibition. The last two, the following two matches will be the championship matches. The Grand Prix Championship matches first up the women and then the men. And by, uh, at the end of those matches, we will know who is the season champion and who will be partaking in the main event of tonight. But here we have Black Rose Julia. Of course, surprising absolutely no one that she would go and challenge Magic Maggie for here. She wants the grandest stage of them all. And what better than the Brawl Mania? This is her time and she definitely has her upped her game as of late. Like it will be in for a nice little sting. And from Brussels, Belgium, the All-Star Champion, Magic Maggie. Here she comes. Season 1 and Season 2 champion Magic Maggie. Absolutely a fantastic brawler. Really gotta make it, makes it a shame that she did not uh, take Season 3 seriously enough to take part in the final race. But nonetheless, she still is one of the greatest legendary brawlers here. And matchup up like this will definitely remind us of why that is. Here we go, the bell has rung, the final exhibition match is on its way, the 12th match, was it the 12th? No, 11th match, of course, obviously. And this one with plenty of history behind it, Black Rose Julia and Magic Maggie, season 1 rivals that started the, all, all of this, that made Pro Masters feel special, made, made the show and the broadcast and all the storyline special was thanks to these two. These two are integral part of what Pro Masters is all about. What started out as a petty rivalry, Mag Magic Maggie as the underdog and Julia establishing her dominance over her uh, turned out to be one of the most heated up rivalries that eventually ended up with Magic Maggie claiming the season championship and proving to everyone that you, no matter how you how how talented or not so talented you are, you always have a way of making it in the Pro Masters. Yeah, these days you couldn't imagine Magic Maggie as someone as an underdog, but believe me, she was the very at the very bottom of the rankings when season one was going. Uh, only by the by the towards end of it that she started getting serious against Black Rose Julia, 
that, that she was able to turn things around and completely reinvent herself. And now she's the submission magician and one of the oh, one of the fan favorites, one of the crowd favorites, one of my favorites, and one of the greatest staples. Magic Maggie say, setting the standards on what it means to be a brawler. Now in this no holds barred match, of course, this is all about Julia's efforts to try and humiliate Magic Maggie. And so so far, well, she started out nice, nice and heavy, but right now Maggie has taken the full control. But these two are known to go back and forth a few times around before coming to a conclusion. Close line against the corner into a spring. Ooh. Well, that springboard attack failed and allowing Julia now to get the upper hand. Going for strikes. Ooh, what a elbow. And yes, if you're looking looking closely enough, yes, those are spines coming out of the jacket of Julia. Or as she calls them, her thorns. So yes, any any strike with the, with the elbows is going to be uh, adding puncture wounds. Setting up now, locking up. The rose has been planted into the cover now. This could be it. Well, I highly doubt that considering who her opponent is, Magic Maggie is not known to go down gently into the night. And definitely not at the first attempt. Both of them missing, but Julia now setting up. Trot slams her down and I believe she, yes, here she goes once again. The entwining rose bringing those thorns across the neck and the chest as well. While keeping both of the arms strapped, wrapping her around. Quite an interesting. Yeah, we have the Black Widow hold by Maggie and now the Entwining Rose by Julia. So both of these brawlers have definitely gotten an inspiration. Now, ooh, there it goes, Sister Abigail. Both of these brawlers definitely have taken, taken an inspiration out of one another. And that's exactly what makes this rivalry very beautiful one. We got a two. Julia still in this fight. I see if I if I could pitch if I could pitch an idea here, I would say that a submission team of Maggie and Julia would be completely undefeated. Well, there would, there would be no women in the roster who could challenge them. Black uh, Black Magic hold uh, I mean a Black Widow hold there from Maggie, but Julia able to fight it off. Yeah, she's she's faced off against it so many times, so multiple times that at this point it doesn't face her as much. She knows how to break it up, as she is fully unprepared for it. On the top rope, now let's see, Maggie not prepared for the knee drop. Julia hooking up the leg, we have one, we have two count, and we have a no, shoulder up. This no disqualification match continues on. It always, uh, always says me, even, even though they choose, choose to go for no disqualification, their brawlers still uh, uh, do not... Like there's there's a cer certain sense of respect you have your for your fellow competitor that they uh, do not go for for the extreme they do not go for thi all the things that they could be able to go once again slams her down not done yet Who hooks up the submission hold the entwining rose once again and this good at this juncture oh no Maggie definitely tried to find her way no she taps out well what an upset talk about well this diet has been full of upsets. And this one definitely gonna be stamped in the history books. Talk about defeating your most hated opponent here in the Brawl Mania, the season finale, the greatest show of them all. The greatest stage of them all. A very great statement victory. Go the final cover. Yeah, this, this replays just uh, giving you a glimpse of what just happened, but not full on explaining how that happened. And there goes the final tap out. I wouldn't have expected that, but Julia coming here. Oh. Interesting. We, we we have a technical difficulty at our hands here. Don't worry. We will have the show show back to you as soon as possible. To just give give us a quick quick second here. Yes, we we for some somehow we lost the feed there, but 
We'll be we'll be back uh, soon enough. And also, don't try this at home, school, or anywhere. Yes, my apologies for that. I have no idea what happened there. Uh, it just went black. And then disappeared. But nonetheless, we still have a show to go. We, we still have a few, few more matches. Three more matches to go. Before wrapping up the night tonight. I see that the... Ah, yes, no. Yes, just a quick second here to fix things up. The last two, uh, the next two matches are supposed to be championship fights, so... Because these are customized matches, it does not... There's that. Yeah, talk about embarrassing right here. Right towards the end, we, we had this and this is wrong. That's what it was supposed to be. Alright. Yes, we'll be we'll be right back on the schedule. No, no worries about that. Yeah, but we, we already saw, saw this one. Julia winning. All right. Now that that that's done, we we are moving on to the twelfth match of the night. The the, the first of the final three ones. First up, it's the women's Grand Prix Championship fight, a one on one Iron Tables match chosen by Rachel Curtis, the Royal Rumble winner winner in the women's division. This is gonna, definitely going to be one hell of a showdown. Okay, so uh, the situation with Maggie and give me just a second because there was also a problem on this end, on the scoreboard end. All right, now now we're on the track. All right, so Magic Maggie, pretty sorry, the sprawler everyone wants to know about. Her final score for the season is going to be a whopping 97. So so close, so close to uh, so close, but so far away, not quite breaking that 100 point threshold. And Black Rose Julia, she comes down to 73. Only a table smash, but Iron Woman table smash. So definitely one that will, or at least one you would assume that would help the powerhouse style here of Rachel Curtis, the junior fighter who managed to overcome the odds and be claimed this uh, 2023 Royal Rumble winner. With that, challenging Kathy Gardner tonight with a match stipulation of her own choice. Could, could imagine a more advantageous situation for her, but Kathy is not, not one to be taken short, shortly. She, she will definitely surprise if given the opportunity, but I would say that this eliminates Kathy's all, all of Kathy's advantages that she would have in a match. Excellent tactician, e e excellent technician, heavy striker. All of those are mitigated. When, when, you, when it comes down to putting your opponent through a table. That is only a matter of strength and uh, 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 good placement. The 
Here comes the defending Grand Prix champion. And if she's able to hold on to that title, if she's able to re retain here, not only is she crowned the undisputed Grand Prix champion, but very likely the season champion as well. Absolutely a fantastic journey. It has been Gaffey Gardner actually the second place for season one championship. Tonight she's about to make the night all about hers. She may have had other motives when it came down to get, getting the Grand Prix title, title back from Martha Baker. Oh yeah, and I, I, I just now realized if, if Gaffey Gardner is crowned the season champion, she's going to, be, going to be facing off against Martha Baker again. That would definitely be something. Right here we here we go. The uh, Grand Prix title, the top title. 15 minutes on the clock. That's the time that these two are allocated to uh, uh, spend as they wish. But honestly, they, both of them are gonna be wishing, doing as much as they can to send their opponent through a table. And as many times as, as ever, Rachel Curtis, the Royal Rumble winner, already dropping down the Grand Prix champion, climbing to the top rope. And Swan Torn Bomb! Yeah, this is exactly how you wanna start a tables match. You wear down your opponent just enough so they to, so they get stunned or they have to take a moment to catch their breath. Once they're out, you go go out, fetch a table and set it up. By the time your opponent is back up, you're ready to set them through it. Ooh, beautiful takedown there from the Grand Prix champion. Kick to the arm. Combat sport. Definitely is what these two women are all about. Kick and a knee to the face, setting up a kick to the back and a jumping double stomp. Yeah, Gaffy starting to showcase that ruthless side of hers that she's well known for. She's letting out the meek, uh, she's uh, dropping out the meek act and go going full, full, uh, full, uh, you know, nerd rage. That's the thing I'm trying to say here. Of course, Gaffy Gardner right now. With the current situation, is ranked number four in the brawling with 111 points. So, so the, the so the, this this match and this Iron Woman contest definitely will be dictating how far ahead she can actually reach here. She will need she will have her work cut out for, and especially against a champion or a challenger against Rachel Curtis, she will need to conserve her energy as much as possible, launching herself into the barricade now. Rachel with strikes. Ooh, once again uh, dropped against the barricade. Ooh, I'm hit it first. Yeah, the steel barricade, even though it's soft and up, it's not gonna be absorbing that much of the impact. Able to counter there and drop the challenger onto her face. Rachel Curtis now being sent. Ooh, against the ring post there. But now let's talk about Rachel Curtis, whether or not she'll be able to, no, she's not able to. With current point 61, unless she really works her butt off here, she, she will most likely not be crowned uh, undisputed Grand Prix champion if she's able to win here. Three minutes, uh, two and a half minutes in, still no tables have been broken, but what about it, they're gonna get broken real soon. Rachel sending Kathy outside. Landing on the table, but no breaking. Of course, it's not gonna be breaking from that kind of an angle. You gotta set it up. Rachel getting the table, but Kathy with sharp kicks. Of course, Kathy doesn't actually have to break any tables here. All she needs to do is, uh, you know, uh, retain the title by either ending this match in a draw or, or by getting at least one table broken, but even, even with that, Let's have a quick calculation, 111 plus 35, 146, with Selena Bochamp at 143, she, she would get, so if Kathy wins here, if Kathy retains the title by any whatsoever means, she, she will be, she will be, she will be most likely the season champion. 
Talk about stealing it right from Sel stealing the thunder front underneath Selena. Not, about, not so much as stealing, stealing the thunder from Thunderstorm Andre. Satsa, Satsa, long, long time coming, but falling so short. But oh well, that's that's just how it happens here. Four minutes in, fight is still continuing on on the ring side. The, the, the duo have been definitely interested in table. Ooh, wait a minute, head scissors locked in. Rachel dropping down Kathy Gardner. With the table now, sm oh, tosses it. Always looking like she was about to toss it to the audience. Not sure what her plan is there, but so far neither of them seem to be in a real hurry here. I mean, it doesn't have to be hurry. It all matters. Just one day full difference. It's all it's all that it makes. All the champion needs here. The winning champion. Kathy setting up the table, but Rachel from behind. No arm track reversal. That was so close for Kathy. She could have been uh, getting the first fall right there. Rachel sent against the table. Kathy, ooh. Rachel with a sharp elbow, able to fight off the champion, lifting her up. This could do it. No, no, Kathy countering. Both of them on top of their games. I'm definitely showcasing that both of them have been preparing for this match specifically. Ooh, beautiful kick there. And with that, Rachel Kurt is sent through the table. That's one, one foil for Kathy here. One table for Kathy. The Grand Prix champion now with, with the leading position. Backbreaker. Yeah, with a very powerful kick. Only only Alexia Regadotir has succeeded in something like that before, but Kaffi making it look so effortless. But the fight is still young. We still have more than nine minutes into this fight, so anything that can happen, and Rachel Curtis definitely now more fired up than ever. Need, needs to be getting in the position, getting the table from the side. And spins around with if so, for some reason, parades it around and gets back inside the ring. But Kathy with sharp, uh, sharp and precise striking. No missing, but keeping up with the strikes. Kathy just making sure that Rachel has no advantage whatsoever. Lifted up though. Goes for the brain buster. If only there would have been table underneath her. Setting up now. And the challenger in a very good position. I think the, I think the champion is a, a lights out. Going for strikes. It's building up momentum here. Ooh, and there goes. The champion came back too. And now for, forces her off. Rachel Curtis now. Being sent onto the table. Lined up. Ooh, once again a sharp elbow. Allowing Rachel to save herself. Setting up and sending Gaffey. Ooh, meeting the tail. I don't know how she wound up like that. I honestly do not know. Well, Rachel now setting up. One more time. With the brain buster. So far away from the table. Actually, the opposite end from the table. So, But that will definitely aid her in her conquest here. Catching hold and setting Gaffy against the table. Lines her up, and here comes the suplex. The challenger, Rachel Curtis, evening out the situation here, but we still have half of this match to go. Oh, look at this, the Canadian backbreaker at this point. Wearing down the challenger. Oh, look at it, really squeezing it, really squeezing her. That Grand Prix champion completely helpless against this, letting her go now. Climbing to the top rope. Does he understand that she needs to be leaning in this situation? Kathy escaping out of the harm's way there and getting on the ringside, looking underneath. But Rachel stopping her in her tracks, crashing the forearm right to the face. The crowd is asking for more tables, and I could not agree uh, more. This, this fight still needs more tables to ca come to a definitive conclusion here. Rachel making her way back inside the ring. No, back outside she goes. Ooh, clubbing to the back and now uh, setting up. Oh, floating Gaffy against the barricade. Gaffy with a retaliation, dragon screw. Rachel getting back up to her feet as well, sending Gaffy into the barricade again. 
resting up, but uh, Rachel not about to let that have a lifting up. Look at this power, it's just massing her right against the barricade. Yeah, does it look like does it look like the challenger here on the, here understands that she still needs to keep the pressure going. She needs to still break at least one more table, and that's fine by the defending champion. Noted about that. Both of them back inside the ring now. Still no tables in sight. Ooh, heavy club. Uh, club taking down the challenger. Ducky out of the way. Momentum here. Close line. Rachel set up in the corner. Ooh, getting caught by, with the kick. And Gaffey now is managing to escape Rachel. Constant clubs to the back. Sending the challenger to the board. And now the fat washing the face with the boot and one more time with big feeling with big momentum scraping the face with the boot really Kathy once again on the ringside five minutes 15 seconds left there comes yet another table and as the champion oh smashing it against Rachel and with that distraction smashing oh head first Unfortunately, not enough to break the table, but a good strategy. Definitely a good strategy there. It doesn't need to be set up perfectly. All that matters is that it's bre it breaks. The challenger picking up and sending the champion back inside the ring. And she comes back inside the ring as well. What is she thinking? No, she goes outside now. Catching hold of the table. And sending it inside. There you go. Took you long enough. The champion stepping outside of the ring. But being lifted up. Effortlessly scary. Oh no, don't do don't no 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 no. Just ramming the back against the barricade again. Absolutely brutal. Four minutes. Bit bit more than four minutes left. Rachel setting up the table against the corner. Interesting choice. Meanwhile, Kathy Gardner. Looking for another table underneath the ring. Rachel already celebrating and Kathy rushing back inside the ring without the table, mind you. Going for strikes. No, gets countered. The challenger catching hold and sending the champion onto the table. This good to do it. This good to very well set the situation going. Lining up a power bomb. There it is. Ooh. What a devastating impact right there. Right back inside with yet another table. Rachel Curtis leading the situation. One to two. If she's able to hold the situation for three more minutes, she will be walking home as the Grand Prix champion, having defeated one of the toughest women in the entire roster for it. Ooh, big boot. Well, that shut her down. Very effectively. Gonna be stomping. What is he planning? Pulling the hair now. Lines up. A woman's right. Yeah, that, that was a two, a two, two for one blow. A full on knockout blow. Setting up the table now. I don't think that Rachel has any way of uh, uh, realizing what's going on at this point. Oh, maybe she does. Knee lift. And Gaffy now. Maybe, maybe this will end up backfiring on the Grand Prix champion here. Lifting up. Oh, no. There she goes, adding to adjustment through the table. Not done yet. Rachel Curtis now with the Canadian backbreaker again. Not gonna be giving you a fall or anything, but she taps out. The Grand Prix champion has tapped out. But the match continues on for two more additional minutes. But Rachel Curtis now in a very excellent position and desperation. Started to pile up on Kathy uh, Gardner. The moment, her moment, it's slipping away from her. As she's facing off against this Canadian powerhouse. Sent outside of the ring. Two minutes on the clock here. And, well, doesn't look like she's panicking that much after all. Stepping outside. What is he? Well, they're coming close here. Honestly, I don't I hope, I honestly hope that this, uh, the announcement table is able to survive through the night. Give us, a, uh, give me at least that. Stepping back outside, Rachel lifting Kathy up. Less than uh, uh, 90 seconds on the clock here. Face drop down onto the apron. Beautiful, beautiful drop down there. Kathy, ooh, what a big boot to the face there. 
the challenger eating it up, but Gaffey is going to be eating up a, a, a hip full of defeat in less than 70 seconds here. Catching hold, and now Gaffey Gartner being dragged around. Yeah, Rachel doesn't even need another table. If anything, she needs to prevent that uh, any more tables are introduced into this match. Going for strike, and now Catching hold lifted up. Ooh, what a powerful slam. Kick to the midsection, locking up. Gonna be heading up once more, one more with, once more with the brain buster. For a bit over 30 seconds on the clock, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, Rachel realizing that there's no point in getting a table anymore. She has already secured her victory. 20, 25 seconds. Ooh, beautiful reversal there from the soon to be ex champion though this fight is over and here we go the final 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 Rachel Curtis has done it she has defeated the Grand Prix champion and uncrowned her here is your winner Absolutely a fantastic victory for Rachel Curtis here. Gra carrying now the gold belt of the Pro Masters here at the very end of the season three. That has to feel absolutely amazing. Many brawlers would want to be in her position right now, but she is the one who has provided herself, uh, proven herself to be the one deserving of the spotlight. Enjoy it. Coming up to the 13th of the matches, the final championship match. We're going to be having a one-on-one -on -one Iron Man contest between Dr. Edwards and Cutie by Cook for the Grand Prix title. The final match that will have any significant uh, change in the uh, rankings here. Cutie by Cook or Dr. Edwards still in this race. Either of them could potentially claim the season championship position, which one of whichever one of them will be. Or will both of them be falling short? We'll find out right now. But before that, before getting into the match, we are going to be tallying up the points. 4-4, four, four, the... 4 raids for Lancafi. First of all, Kathy Gartner. She was able to get one fall out of that fight. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let me double check. Yes. Kathy Gartner reaches the third place. Currently, let's see whether or not it'll, it'll be affected by this to about 117 points. Able to outtake Mark Hunter after all. And before moving on to this match, I gotta count. Rachel Curtis, the Grand Prix champion. Yes. And 35, so that's gonna be 106 points. Rachel Curtis able to come through and break that 100 point threshold. So, did I say 106? So she's taking fifth place now. Very impressive. Of course, we, we still have Dr. Edwards and Cutie by Duke about to start. But yeah, the scoreboard definitely did change up tonight. Next to these events. 
Alright, here we go. The, fi the final fight. By the end of this fight, we will have concluded. The following contest okay. is an Iron Man match and is for the Men's Grand Prix Championship. Yes, as I was about to say, by the end of this match, or at the uh, rather at the end of this match, we will now know who is going to be the season champion. Selena Bochamp currently leading the pack with 143 points. 43 points, yes. With, with the two people remaining still uh, valid for point increases, Dr. Edwards with 99 points. In this Iron Man contest, and Cutie by Cook himself with 95. The Grand Prix title gonna be giving uh, uh, the, the holder, the final holder, holder 35 points. So it, you you can uh, it's it's only a few falls away, a few falls away. Well, it, it's gonna be actually a few more than a few, but both both Cutie Pie as well as Doctor Edward still stand. In a position where they can be claimed the season champion. The winner of the Royal Rumble 2023 men's division, Dr. Edwards. Him realizing that this fight needs to be an Iron Man contest. That's what he has called for. Actually, actually previously it was stated to be a Hell in a Cell fight, but uh, I like I like two weeks back. He was planning on a hell in a cell, but it got cancelled off uh, sometime before the start of the show tonight. For unknown uh, reasons, I I have no idea what came over him. And here comes the defending Grand Prix champion, representing the queens and representing fanboys everywhere, uh, everywhere. The mo one of the most beloved brawlers ever. Cutie by Cook and a technical master at that. It's because of his technical mastery that he is exactly in this position tonight. Having defeated Marshall David in a submission fight for the title. Nothing short of impressive. Both of these men standing, uh, standing right here uh, at the pin pinnacle moment at the Top moment in the Pro Masters, the final Grand Prix title match of season three. Introducing the challenger from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 245 pounds. Doctor Edwards. And introducing the champion from Sydney, Australia, weighing in at 143 pounds. He is the men's Grand Prix champion, Kiyuni Pie Cook. The moment is here. The gold title for once once more is up for the grabs. Junior fighter Dr. Edwards, Cutie Pie Cook, the defending champion. The defending Grand Prix champion. Both season one classic characters. Powerhouse versus Technician and both with very, very, very unique styles of fighting. 15 minutes on the clock and here we go. The bell has rung and the fi final... Uh, uh, no, uh, the final scoring event of season three is on us. The, uh, this, uh, this will determine who we will be seeing in the main event tonight. Going up against the Elimination Chamber winners, Marfa Baker and Blue Brood is going to be the uh, season three champion who's going to be crowned once we have a se uh, se secure, uh, secure, not secure, but once we have a clear idea on who, who the champion is. As well as a partner of their choice, Selena Bochamp currently leading, but we, these two could still shake things up. They have 15 minutes time to do so, and uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they manage to do just that. 
Especially in a one-on-one -on -one Iron Man contest like this. Interesting choice there from Dr. Edwards to, uh, to choose this kind of simulation. But honestly, it was the only only thing he could choose if he was hoping to get the season, season championship. And that definitely is what he's been aiming for. Beautiful roll-off there into the cover now. Cutie Pie Cook with a surprise spin. We have one, only a one count. Not enough to uh, take catch, catch the good doctor off guard. He picked up here. Lining up goes for the back breaker following up a neck breaker. A very beautiful combination. Iron Man contest, so both pinfalls and submissions are valid choices. Cutie Pie definitely would be the one to take advantage of the submission while Dr. Edwards most likely, more likely to knock their opponent out and then just secure pinfalls after another. Would, would imagine to be... Well, I don't know. This is definitely a battle of uh, techni technical minds. Cutie Pie now starting to show that, showcase the technical mastery of his. Looking up the bow and arrow hold, the classic Pro Masters hold here. Using it to strain, but not enough. Goes for the cover, breaks it up. Dr. Edwards and Cutie Ooh, missing the close like Cutie Pie just walking past it. I don't know. Is there is is are his glasses broken or, or what? Head scissors take down into the small packets and getting an upskirt view. I wonder if he No, right before a free count. Yeah. I cannot wonder whether or not Dr. Re uh, Dr. realized where he ended up in. Setting up, eat, defeat, the champion is taking control of the situation here and now just waiting for that, oh there he goes, setting up, no get scout, ooh what a stiff uppercut and now the good doctor in a position here, lifting up cutie pie, fireman scary dropping him down, oh ho, ho. gonna be a bit trouble, ooh springboard, yeah there's so much action happening, I, I do not have time to even commentate on all that, swinging neck breaker there. Yeah, just, you imagine that things are going one way and all of a sudden there's a reversal and uh, things go other way. That's what I'm talking about. Cutie Pie Koo, All-Star Brawler, Grand Prix Champion, Dr. Edwards, Royal Rumble winner and a classic character. Two count and three. Cutie Pie Koo has secured the first fall. But that's uh, ho uh, hopefully that's the first of the many. He still needs to... He's still in this race, but so is Dr. Edwards. Uh, Eleven and a half minutes left on the clock. Counter there. Dr. Edwards catching hold, lining up the femboy into an Alabama slam. He's looking up the leg and looking up the other one. A sharpshooter hold. No, no, not quite. A deathlock. Deathlock. Oh, what a horrible strain. But definitely an excellent idea from the doctor. After all, he knows. He has studied the tape. He knows what Cutie Pie is all about. He has studied his medical profile, I would say, even. And he knows that, that. Oh, there we go. Looking up. Ah, oh, very interesting hold. Oh, there we go. Sensing in. The sleeper hold here. Cutie pie. Able to force it off. Yeah. Dr. Edwards knows that the femboy fights are the thing he needs to watch out for. Getting hold. Ooh, what a stiff elbow to the face. The Grand Prix champion takes down the challenger. Hooks up the leg and tries to get the second fall going. We have one. We have a two count and kick out. Not enough damage has been done, not enough resiliency has been tipped away from this unnatural might. Eat defeat, this might definitely turn things around. Cutting hold and there come, uh, yeah, there, there they come, the fanboy fights have been locked in. Fully locked in here. This could be it. Or at least getting another fall. Dr. Edwards kicking at the rope but the referee not seeing it. The cutie pie instead letting him go but... Keeping up with the headlock and going for punches. Absolutely a wild show. Hooks up the leg. He thinks this is enough for a fall. Let's see. Two and three. Dr. Edwards falling, falling again. Cutie Pie with two to nothing league victory here. I believe, I believe that part of this is the fact that Thunderstorm and Trey was unable to cause any serious harm. To Cutie Pie Cook last first day during that ambush attack. Cutie Pie able to successfully fight off the uh, uh, then professional martial arts champion.
Yeah, definitely if Andre would have delivered more, more of a painful attack, the, this matchup could have went the, a whole another way. Ooh, the metal mask breaking the face of Cutie Pie there. Oh, he's bleeding heavily. But fortunately, the fanboy was full on top of the situation and uh, took down Thunderstorm and Trace attack. Kick to the leg there. Wobbling around with it. What is... Oh, it looked like he... Did he pass out? He almost looked like he was about to pass out there. Setting up. Draped across the middle rope. What is he? Oh, the thighs again. Leg trap DDT. I'm pretty sure I saw plot there as well. Ooh, close line reversal. The doctor is back up. Drop kick. Eight minutes left on the clock. Cutie by Cook. The defending Grand Prix champion still leading this two to nothing. And at this point it's gonna be walking home with the championship title. Ooh, running Bulldog. And now picking up. No gets countered. Once again using that metal mask for his advantage. Scrapping the face, and there we go. The trap squeeze, the pacifier locked in, targeting both of the shoulders with the sleeper hold. He's fading, he's fading, he's gone. The Grand Prix champion is down, and with that, Dr. Edwards hoping to earn the at least one fall. Kick out at two, Cutie Pie coming to. Coming back from the haze and getting, getting back into the fight. And definitely getting back, uh, kicking a good doctor in the face there. Lining up, a solid kick to the back. Stomp right onto the arm. Half well, they point through the match already. Less than less than seven and a half minutes left. They are able to avoid damage there, so is Dr. Edwards. Both of them just in prime shape for this fight. Another head, but just fully taking advantage of the metal mask there. Goes for the cover, two count and three. Well, that's one fall for Dr. Edwards, but the Grand Prix stamp champion still leading with one. And in case of a draw, the champion is going to be retaining by default. Going for punches and clubs and a stomp to the chest, or actually to the stomach there. Beautiful. Dragon screw reversal. Gets it. Oh, gets the leg pick. Ooh, and straight to the hamstring crusher. Oh, and another reverse. All these two are on top of their game. They have been waiting for it. This is the night that they both have been anticipating training for all everything that the season three has been all about. It has all culminated to tonight. Lifted up. Beautiful toss there. Just unnatural strength there being on full display. Dr. Edwards going for the. Looking up, there goes another missile, another sleeper hold. Cutie Pie trying to find a way out of this one. No, he taps out. Dr. Edwards evening out the score here, 2-2. Two to two. Li Little less than 6, uh, little less than 6 minutes left. And going for the cover now, Dr. Edwards, 2 count and 3. But with that, the junior fighter, the challenger, has taken the lead in this championship fight. Still, still have five and a half minutes left. The champion trying to get something going here. Takes down the doctor, lines him up. Spear in the corner, rolls up. And what is he? Lines up one more time. Ooh, elbow to the shoulder. Ooh, beautiful blackout. Blackout Meteora into the cover now. Hook up the leg, two count and three. The score is even once more, three to three right now. Cutie by Cook and Dr. Edwards, five minutes still left on the clock here. Rolling with the waist lock and tosses him down. If you can only imagine the pressure that he must have been feeling right there. This is the moment that the champion will be decided. This is the final opportunity. Is it gonna be Cutie by Cook, Dr. Edwards or the number one reigning champion, Selena Bochamp. Beautiful neck breaker there, trapping the arm as well. Hooks up the leg. And shoulders are down. The doctor gasping for air, but no, 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 none so vain. All for vain. Beauty by now leading 4-3. to three. Kick to the midsection, DDT. 
as the Grand Prix champion is once again taking this fight under his control. Setting up, and there come the fights again. Absolute, yeah, there it goes. The impact is starting to realize that tapping out. Once again, the bell is ringing, and cutie by Q now with five balls in total. Oh, not done yet. Goes for another one. Is he going to force another tap out? I think he is. Yes, he is. Cutie by Cook now leading six to three. You know, he took a very, very, very heavy strike here multiple times and paying off with that. But Dr. Edwards not done yet. Trapping both of the shoulders again. The pacifier once more being applied here. And there goes the lights. Good night. Rolls up and hoping to at least even out the situation here a bit. Two count and three. Dr. Edwards getting four falls. Cutie still leading with two. Three minutes left on the clock. Oh, maybe maybe tying up here. Potentially tying up the situation. Another submission hold. Sleeper hold applied. Goes for the tap. Taps out. Secures yet another pin. Uh, submit, uh, uh, well, another fall. Six to five. The champion still leading. But with one and just barely three minutes left. Beautiful counter there. Goes for the club to the back. Stomps onto the leg. Stomping the arm as well. Really just dismembering your opponent at this point. Another blackout meteora. I suppose I, we should call that upskirt meteora. Coming in with the frog splash. Picks up the good doctor now. Beautify with a heavy strike and sending... The good doctor in the corner. Two and a half minutes now. Wrist lock now locked in. Beautiful Hurricane Rana takedown. Ooh, a kick to the face there. And the doctor is back up to his feet. Yeah, just unnatural might. No matter how many times you take him down. No matter how you, you take him down. He always come ba comes back for more. Crushing the hamstring. And just looking up. Once again with the take death lock. Absolutely horrendous position, but not gonna be tapping out, it seems. No. Man managing to uh, hold his position long enough. Setting up an eavesdrop to the face. Chop. Another one. The doctor just taking away bit by bit. Lifting up. Backbreaker. Yeah, what happened to the Hippocratic Oath? You shall not cause harm or whatever it was. Beautify with a dragon screw. Oh, get, oh, beautiful quick thinking. They're about to get a boot to the face, but Beautify recovering from it, but not from this one. Another devastating suplex toss. Picking up Beautify and setting up. There we go. This could even out the score. I know that about it. It will. Submission hold. Cutie by trying to find his way out of this one. You can see the panic striking. No, he taps out. Once again, evening the situation. Six to six. One minute left. Dr. Edwards now. Picking up Cutie Pie. Slams him down with a sidewalk slam. Hooks up the leg and this could end up. Dr. Edwards taking the lead here. Yeah, he does. Seven to six. Uh, six to seven. Dr. Edwards now leading. The challenger... Oh, getting the arm wrench now. Ooh, what a, what a glove with the elbow. If he's able to hold this situation for six, uh, seven, uh, 30 more seconds. No, Cutiepie with a surprise spin again. Two count and three. Cutiepie once again, even in the score out. 15 seconds on the clock. The Grand Prix champion just moments away from a draw, draw and a default victory. Absolutely cruelly. See, five, four, three. Two, one, and draw. What a conclusion, what a conclusion, and with that, PewDiePie Cook getting the, uh, by default, uh, remains the Grand Prix champion. You, you will now need to give me a bit of a moment here, so I'll be able to tally up the points here, but we will have, uh, we will for certain know the Grand Prix champion, it's just a matter of moments here. So let's see. Let's see here. Mm. 
Dr. Edwards first. His final tally comes to 114. And with that, because he's not the Grand Prix champion, he's still part of the junior fighting division. And as such, Punk Hercules is not the undisputed junior fighting champion. He's the, he's the champion still, but not undisputed. With a uh, 8 point difference, Dr. Edwards is still, still the person in lead. And now, Cutie by Cook. Th this is the moment of truth. Well, with this. Let's see. All right, there. And final check here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to say that we now have conclusive results on who is the season three champion and you you will fi find it out soon enough as we get, get into the main event of tonight the final show the uh, mostly an exhibition show tonight but a uh, two on two mixed gender tag team match against the elimination chamber winners but first i need to do this I mean, I'm not gonna be keeping it a secret. Just with two point difference, with just two point difference, I am proud to present to you the winner of the season three of Brawl Masters. Let me just get them up here. Ba -ba -da -ba. It's cutie by Cook. First person, 145 points. Selena Bochamp coming so close with 143 points. But not quite enough to secure the victory. So, congratulations for cutie by Cook. You are the season 3 Brawl Masters champion. You will get your belt at the start of season 4. But now we have. The final show of the night, the final final matchup of tonight, the season three champion Cutie by Cook with the with their tag team partner of choice going up against the Elimination Chamber winners, Marfa Baker and the Blue Brood. Give me just a second here to see if if there is a. Yeah, I think that Selena would be would would be the one that she, he would want. So yes, and this is not a title match. This is just an exhibition match. So yes, at long last, the final event, the final match. Of season three, a uh, mixed gender tag team match. Marfa Baker and Blue Brood promised to be given a main event position uh, after winning the elimination chamber, their respective elimination chambers, and going up against them a very particular pair, pair of brawlers, definitely on top of their game, and uh, know that about it undisputed. Well, cutie by Cook as the undisputed. Men's Grand Prix Champion and Selena Bochamp as the undisputed women's professional martial arts champion. Definitely a championship pair of the dreams. This is very sad. Yeah, it's been a wild night, but at long last. It's all, all coming to a conclusion. So, so yes, the the uh, race has been grueling. It's been uh, from the start of October to the end of April. So many months, so many hours of wrestling action, so many matches, so many turns, so many twists and turns. But here we are at the final show. 
all the brawlers have been getting earning victories. All of them have been getting screen time due to the nature of the nature of the game. Some have been earning more of that. Those have been fully earned as we have this final match of the season three. A fin final showcase of the greatest talent in the entire series. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to put your hands together. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, representing the Queens. From Sydney, Australia, weighing in at 143 pounds, the Men's Grand Prix Champion, Kiyuni Pie Cook. Undisputed. Grand Prix Champion and Season 3 Champion Cutie Pie Cook. An absolutely a fantastic journey and a come from behind victory. He wasn't even part of top 6 brawlers. But yeah, with, with, with that final match he had just now with Dr. Edwards giving everything he had. He was able to earn enough falls that they would carry over and take him to the top position. Here lies your champion. And he, he will be most proud of it, defending it in, in the season four. And her partner from Montreal, the women's professional martial arts champion, Selena Bochan. And yet another, the runner-up to the season competition, and the undisputed women's professional martial arts champion, Selena Bowtam. Yet another one who came out of nowhere, and was about to, well, who absolutely took the competition by storm right here at the final peak of the season three. This is where it's at, and these two have definitely earned their time in the spotlight tonight, as they give us this one final demonstration on what Good brawling, good wrestling is all about. Remember, this is ju ju just a, a showcase match. This will not be a warning. This will no longer be affecting the score tally whatsoever. No titles are on the line. This is just for the sake of wrestling for the one of it. And from of this world, weighing in at 242 pounds, Root Hunter. Honestly speaking, I couldn't imagine a better man to be taking part in this final fight. The Blue Brood, a very legendary brawler who has time and time again proven himself to be the greatest of the competitors. Absolutely a wild man, full on control, full on warrior honor and the winner of the 2023 Elimination Chamber. Hence why he's taking part in the main event tonight. Many men dream of beating him, many men uh, dream of getting in the ring with him. And tonight that honor belongs to Cutie Pie Cook. At long last, the hostess of tonight, the Elimination Chamber winner of the Women's Division, and the Queen of the Bubble Era. And from the 80s, Mrs. Martha Baker! Absolutely, this is the moment she's been preparing for. Though not the Grand Prix champion anymore, but still. Let's be honest, facing off against this duo is much greater an honor than being the Grand Prix Champion. And she's had a, quite, a, quite a bit of a makeover as of late. She was full on prepared for this fight, getting ready for this show tonight.
And here we go, one for one more time. One final fight of the season three. Here it very comes to a conclusion. The season three champion, Judy by Cook, facing off against the Blue Brute. Runner up, Selena Bowtamp, Judy by Cook's chosen partner for this match, going up against Martha Baker. Mixed gender tag team action. This is where we will all come to a conclusion here. And it's been definitely a wild ride throughout. They are def definitely just just taking bad, de de taking it all in. This season three of Brawl Masters has been the longest ongoing project that I've ever taken part of, and uh, it's been absolutely a blast. Yes, this is this is the part where I give the thanks, thank you, and give about uh, give a bit of my, my my thoughts about the situation. So yeah, this has been absolutely a wild ride, and what what has made it, it special? It, it has given me. Uh, uh, an opportunity to create content that I like and uh, uh, grow with that content that I like. Blue Brute making the draft to Martha Baker, Selena Bochamp inside the ring now as well. Uh, both Blue Brute and Cutie Pie just climbing on the ropes there. Yeah, this has been definitely an experience and definitely a fun experience to uh, go through. And uh, uh, honestly, uh, I, 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 I hate this. I, I hate this. Like, I'm I'm the guy who who thinks that all, all the people who give like thanks you thank yous to to their viewers and whatnot are total losers. Like that that's just sucking up to them, and I, that's exactly what I want to avoid here. But uh, having a steady audience, ha having people coming in, wanting to be part, uh, well, giving likes, give, giving views, sharing the videos, gi giving feedback. Uh, being part of the excitement and uh, also, uh, also getting involved with, with the show that that's that has been a very I don't know it's been a very very interesting I, I like honestly speaking uh, realistically speaking a year back I would have imagined myself being in a this this kind of a position a year year later and uh, actually enjoying this so yes uh, obligatory thank you from the bottom of my heart. I actually do appreciate uh, all the support. Every every time you come and view view me, uh, every every single co co time you come in and view my videos, even if it's for, for a few seconds or whatsoever, if you deem like that, it, that's not what you what, what you're looking for tonight. It still matters to me because uh, uh, it, it pushes me to put on more more content, more more of this and. More of brawling action and make it even better for you and better, better for an experience for everyone to enjoy. So yes, uh, from the bottom of my ha heart, thank you. We still have a very small audience and uh, honestly speaking, I would like to see it grow. And that's that's why that's what it is. That's why I keep keep on improving. That's why, um, uh, 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 yeah, I, I'm messing up with the words. But yes, all these brawlers, every everyone you see, has been has been a has been a uh, uh, passion. Uh, like this whole show is a passion project. No, nothing short of that. And uh, there, there is no. This is not not for uh, not for the sake of me trying to one day make this into a career. I do not care about that. This is nothing but a passion project for me, and I want to keep on this going for as long as I'm able to. And I'm able to keep on going as far, as long as I find it personally interesting. Like that's where it's gonna come and come to. Fortunately, wrestling is plenty of interesting, as we've seen tonight. I I would not have expected all the plot twists that took place tonight. Like we didn't even have any any rivalries or run-ins or any kind of that happen. We just had action happen, and it, it just that pure action, this pure sportsmanship, was enough. To turn things around completely different. Like I did not expect Cutie Pie Cook to be crowned the grand uh, the season champion. Okay, but yeah, ba back to back to giving giving on this. Now now actually giving, getting back to this commentary here. It's been it's been wild, wild four hours and it's gonna continue. Yes yes. Uh, the season four, the season four of Pro Masters. Uh, at, at, at the rate that things are going right now, we're gonna be... Oh, there's a cover by Marfa, only a two count. Uh, at the rate of how we're going, the next, uh, the season four is gonna be premiering 11th of a, uh, May. Once again, I'm messing up April and May. 11th of May, 
But no, no worries. Next week on Friday, I am planning to do a special Pro Masters preview, a preview of the new new characters. There are a few that I want to finish up and showcase to you, and we, it'll be like a it'll be like a designer stream. So we'll be designing some of the characters. I have I have a few ideas I haven't had the time to work on, but other than those few missing characters, uh, well, actually, we don't even need those. The season. Season 4 is ready to start at any time, and oh, here goes for the cover, cutie pie, two count, kick out, blue fruit still in this fight. Honestly, the only reason why the uh, Season 4 doesn't start next week is because first they happens to be made a 4, and as you know, I'm as a huge Star Wars fan, that, that day is special, so instead, oh, small packet spin here, surprise spin, cutie pie, uh, only a one count. And there has been tagged. Yeah, the Ma Made of Four is coming next week. And that's gonna be a Star Wars stream. So yeah, that's that's the reason. Uh, why, why Season 4 won't start next week. But you, 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 you have been patient with me. And you have al always been patient with, with my product. So uh, you, you, you can surely... Surely get, get on with... Uh, uh, just... Uh, I don't know. I'm uh, messing around. I'm, I'm just having... It, it's been a wild ride. This has definitely been an experience and I still want to improve uh, and... Uh, yeah. It's gonna be a whole, whole new type of show. I can promise you that. Ooh, what a chop there. Cutie Pie, the season champion showcasing definitely why he is the season champion. Setting up. Being picked apart. Ooh, what a headbutt. Blue Fruit now preparing the strike as usual. There it is, the Grand Champion Suppercut into the cover now. Selena coming to break it off. Glad to see that she's... Despite losing to Pie with just two points. With just two points, imagine that. He, he, uh, it would have been really beautiful if we had two season champions, like an even scoring, but. Yeah, yeah, it was so close. It was very close. It came down to the line. If if both Cutiepie and Dr. Edwards would have had one less spinfall each, then, then uh, in that case, Q, both Cutiepie and Selena both have, would be uh, uh, both season champions, but. Ultimately, Cutie Pie with with that one, uh, one for extra fall was able to secure enough points to claim the top position. Ooh, beautiful! Oh, hey, and she also knows the upskirt meteora. <laughs> Very nice. Setting up and kick to the back. Selena Bow Champ. Definitely did not imagine when Selena's debuted in season two. Definitely did not uh, imagine her being uh, the the main eventer in season three, or the or the undisputed champion. Come sing, beautiful cross body. And now looks like preparing the strike, setting up knee lift, and with that famous sir. Rolls up and hooks up with the leg. She's going for the cover. We have one and the blue brute coming to break it, break uh, or at least distract the referee. Cutie by taking him down, but and Selena with the knee lift again into the famous sir. Yeah, she is one adamant woman when it comes to that. We have the leg. She goes for the cover, two count, and shoulder up. So close, so close to a free count, but not quite there. Going for springboard. Lift it up, look at this. Powerbomb, ooh. Sit up powerbomb there from Martha Baker. Catching hold, but gets countered. Lift it up, backbreaker and neckbreaker. Yeah, that's a, I, I absolutely love that combination. It's one of my favorites. On the top rope now, Selena Bochamp comes in, crossbody. Making it her way to tag in Cutie Pie Cook. 
and Blue Brood has been also has to get inside the ring, set, who's now sent in the corner. The Femboy, the season champion, wrist lock into a hurricane runner takedown. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. We have one, we have a two, and a kick out. But the question is for how much longer can they go? Multiple punches to the face. Beauty by making the tag. Martha Baker and Selena Bochamp now inside the ring. Both women have been very, 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 very great women from season two. And Blue Brood and Cutie by Cook from season one. It's a really beautiful come together. Tag has been made. It's the men's turn again. And Cutie by starting up with a chop and a kick and another chop. Blue Brood in the corner. Gets whipped into the opposite corner into the Cutie uh, Champions corner. Setting up wrist lock again. The goes for another Hurricane Rana takedown. Yeah, my throat is start, starting to dry up. I I I wasted. Uh, I drank all my water. Uh, uh, a few matches ago, hook up the leg, two count, and a free. No, are you kidding me? That's still not a conclusion. The excitement continues here. Re le le eat defeat. It's very good that after four four and a half hours, I'm still fumbling, setting up. Here we go, Lexis are locked in, the fanboy fires and Cutie, uh, Marfa breaks it up. Ooh, what a solid kick to the head. Lifted up, Fireman Scary. Ooh, into the thrill of hand. Blue Brute hoping this is it, the Mandalorian Warrior hooks up the leg, Selena breaks it up again. Yeah, that's just great sportsmanship right on there on display. The fight is gonna continue on with these pairs. Picked up here. And Cutie Pie now being tracked into the corner. Or position. Ooh, able to escape from there. Sharp kick to the leg there. Wrenching the arm. Ooh, kick to the midsection. Blue Brute. The bounty hunter takes down the femboy. A successful tag. Oh yeah, speaking of the Blue Brute. Chris Akrumirani. Uh, tonight I was able to at long last upload a video. Hooks up the leg. Here we go, Selena Bochamp for the victory. Oh, the referee being distracted again. Yeah, for the longest time I had a problem with my video editing software, but tonight I was able able to get finally get the video out. Another famous surf there from Selena. Hooks up the leg again. And Blue Brute once again coming in to distract the referee. I gotta, gotta wonder how he puts up with that. Constantly being interrupted. In the corner, try to ooh springboard, whisper in the wind. Unfortunately, no one home for that one. Setting up, ooh whipper snapper. Selena is down and Cutie Pie was well, he's rushing in, but not taking, not helping out. Two no kick out. Must have realized that Selena would be kicking out on her own. Talk about trust or being foolhardy, but maybe this time Hollywood of Vine locked in. Martha Baker signature. Oh. And the referee has been distracted again. I see. I, I, at this point, I would just call it a disqualification if I was the referee. These constant interruptions at the workplace. Alternating strikes and a club from both arms. Wrenching up, side leg sweep. Martha Baker picking up Selena Bochamp. Lifted up into a cradle carry, smashing the lower back against the turnbuckle. Crossing the arm now. Being picked up. And now tracked. Right into the corner. Ooh, locking up. Just constant punches and stomps. Unrelenting assault right there. Picking up Selena again. Catching hold, but ooh. Sharp elbows. Very sharp elbows to the mid midsection. Definitely, allow, and a toe breaker definitely allows Selena to go uh, seek the cover and definitely go in and make the tag. Cutie Pie Cook and Blue Brute now inside the ring, looking up. Running Bulldog. 
the season champion. Ooh, this could be it. This definitely could be it. The Femboy 5 is locked in. They are locked in and the Blue Brew taps out. Ladies and gentlemen. Cutie by Cook securing himself a very monumental, a very statement victory, defeating one of the greatest brawlers and definitely cementing himself as the season champion. What a show, what a here are some of the replays here, but still, what a what a words are absolutely failing me. It was absolutely wild, wild, wild right to the up all the way up to the end. But at long last, here we are at the end of season three. It's been a it's been a great ride, and I hope that the season four is gonna be even that much greater. Thank you so much for joining the Brawl Masters. Thank you for joining the season three. Thank you for joining this season three finale. As always, I've been your host Kubari Parta, and this has been Brawl Masters. We will be back in one week, 11th of May. And if you're wondering about the scoring situation, uh, the final scores for every single brawler, don't worry. I will be posting them tomorrow. Give give people enough time to get up with this if they, if they want to. But yeah, tomorrow uh, I will be making a community post. We will, we will see which one of the brawlers, uh, how they ranked overall. And get, is, is, is start sweeping up the slate and getting ready for season 4. Alright, but for now... I wish all of you a very good night. I wish you all of you a very good week. And I hope to see you, I suppose, on Friday for a sneak preview of Season 4. Alright, good night.